She said, trust me, these are the stories we will tell as I stood frozen, infinite, I almost fell, but I got a feeling and my heart starts beating, a sudden rush of feeling alive, this is freedom and I won't change, I won't phase out. Thank <laughs> you. 
As the sun steps down and escapes the day We'll calmly walk away, walk away from the frame When structure falls and all else fails We will build it once again
Hello, welcome all. <laughs> oh, I can't speak. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first uh, match of DPL season one. I am uh, casting today, Spa, and I'm joined with my co co caster. This is Biako here. So we got a lovely matchup for you today. It's going to be uh, Guac versus Team Red. Uh, should be a fun one here, uh, and we'll get going here in just a second. Just getting everybody updated onto the new build, and and well, then we'll be uh, ready to go. But uh, so, how do you how do you think this matchup is going to go today? Yeah, um, both these teams are uh, positive uh, win records. They both are two one. Um, you know, I think red team definitely has the is a strong favorite in this match today with the. Uh, they have much more experience, much more, you know, veteran players. But Guac has definitely been very impressive this season. They've been doing very good with an inexperienced, with a relatively new and inexperienced team. And honestly, they have been very impressive this season. So this is going to be a really interesting match. Um, I really, I think Red Team is going to take this, but it will be really interesting to see if Guac has some ways that they can bring the um if they can take this yeah i think we can expect one of those two to one score lines today and i think a lot of close rounds um either way is going to be the case you know coming down to some of those 1v1 1v2 duels um not one of those complete smashes hopefully that we've seen uh, a few games you know um just whatever makes it exciting though is what i'm uh, what i'm rooting for the most here uh, so right now we've got uh, one of the teams all readied up, and uh, it looks like Wax getting their last two members set to go, and we'll be jumping in as soon as they uh, get their their group set up and yeah. uh, jump in the match. So Biako, who do you think um, is your predictions on this? How this um, match is going to go? Um, I I will lean towards red, but again, it's I, like I said, it's I think it's still going to be a two to one um, set, and I'm I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of close rounds as well. And I'm thinking we're going to see those score lines in, you know, the 5-3, maybe 5-4 range. I don't think we're going to see 5 zeros and 5 ones just swinging out. You know, I don't think it's going to be a 2-0, a you know, set with a 5-0, 5-1 like we've seen in the previous weeks with some teams. Um, I think it's going to be close. And, uh, you know, that's always going to make it entertaining. Yeah, uh, definitely, for sure. Um, you know, Glock uh, has been very impressive so far i mean uh they they have definitely some they definitely have some relatively you know new players but they work together very well and they have very interesting strategies so you know even with red and they're you know hundreds of games and you know they play together for a long time most of these players um uh you know that it's still definitely possible for them to be taken out they have lost one game so far the season so they're definitely not perfect and um they can easily i mean they can um definitely be taken down exactly and i think they've both been watching uh, some of the other competitors play over the last few weeks and maybe have picked up on some of you know the strategies and tactics being used there uh some wonderful things we saw last week were some just like something you didn't expect from this game really which were set nades uh, we saw a few times where grenades were thrown through windows on factory and ended up getting frags, you know, before the rounds even started. And that's, you know, some stuff that we're really going to be seeing more teams picking up on here in the near future. So still waiting on uh, the last member of Guac to get set up and joined in. Uh, but once that's uh, underway, uh, we'll be loaded in here just in a matter of moments, hopefully. So, um. Got a, a couple other matches coming up uh, over the next few days, as we've seen as the season continues. Uh, give us a little bit of rundown of what other teams we're going to be seeing uh, over the course of the weekend. Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, I believe there are three games, if I stand corrected. Um, two, um, yeah. Tomorrow, we'll have three games. Uh, status Quo versus Fluff, a very hype match with undefeated fluff we can see if status quo can take down the kings um then we have another two games uh, of uh, spg versus the rats and dfc versus flatline and then on sunday there will be another match against lcg versus core dynasty i mean core dynamics not dynasty and on monday there will actually be a game as well with eric arvarks and dark lights dudes excellent yeah so 
Fluff definitely looking uh, like a very strong team right now. We'll see if uh, status quo can do something about that. And they've been uh, a challenging team to beat and even get rounds off of. Yep. The So this weekend is jam-packed with games. And um, if you want to check out the schedule, just go to dpleague.net. All right. There you have it. So it looks like our uh, two teams are jumping in the match right now. Um, should be able to join in here momentarily and uh, give you the view of set one, round one, as uh, we're underway here. Oh, get that loaded in. Yes, maybe. <laughs> I think the servers are like spinning up still with the new build. Yeah, I'm seeing the. Uh a connect button that disappears on me randomly. So hopefully. Okay. Yep. Uh, we just got confirmation that the service is still spinning up from Ozzy. So yeah, it'll be a uh, one, two more minutes, but uh, we'll, we should get started very soon. So in the meantime, uh, let's, let's think ahead to the future. They're going to be adding some, some good oldies back into the game. Uh, namely suppressors. You're going to be seeing the riot shield coming back. You're going to be seeing the gun cart coming back. Do you think teams will have to shift their strategies a lot when some of these are? In yeah, the the game. I think once the items get back, uh, I mean, I'd say less so for suppressors, but you know, they just power play is going to be you know a little stronger. But once the shield and the cart comes back, it's going to be uh, like a, a completely different game. I mean, like. For the round that you use those items on, it completely changes the way you play, and it's going to be very interesting to see how teams adapt to that change, if if it comes within the season, of course. Yeah, I would have to say that the, the most game-breaking thing, if you want to call it that, I mean, it is part of the game, I don't know if it'll break it, is going to be when you see the ride shields come out and just how... The defending side will have to handle that because right now I would say the defenders maybe have a slight advantage, but not by much. And giving them sh giving shields will be a very huge counter. So it looks yeah. like uh, the match is ready here. So they are loading in, servers are up, and uh, getting our usual uh, starting screen antics. Though I'm only seeing uh, Four members of Guac in. I hope they uh, get their fifth in here soon before the match actually gets underway. Yep. <clears throat> so uh, the first map is going to be... The first map, it's going to be a whole bunch of loading screen. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it was not... Uh, I thought it was going to load in, but it's going to be factory, okay? Yes. It's going to be factory. Good, good old factory on, you know, the map. Uh, and crest, just, cresting Wolverine. And just as a reminder, we are on the new build, so there will be new maps here. This is the first time they're going to be seen yeah. on DPL. So these are... Unless they've... Unless these teams have played today, they they do not know these maps at all. So it's gonna be a completely fresh experience for both teams, and you know we're gonna see completely new strategies evolve around what these teams can think of. This is a very interesting um, bomb site. It's like like last week's um, like two weeks ago or last week they had the this like no man's land, but it's now renamed alleyway with this bomb inside a storage container it's very interesting and um you know this power seems pretty hard to defend for the the defending side because you know it's on like the opposite side of the bomb and if they're in the office it's really hard they would need to commit members to protect this power on the other side so you know it's it seems pretty hard to defend the power on this map and the attackers could use that to advantage it seems like um the attackers are going, the guacamole is going to just do a dock push into office, get that high ground advantage, and then just make their way over to bomb. Yeah, it looks like I'm seeing them marking out some of the doorways down there. Seems like they might want to keep one guy on the dock side, just in that corner as a uh, possible lurk, just to guard that stairway coming up so that they're going to have that office control, they hope. You know, smoke off, grab off, as like you said, but keep a guy in the back line because, you know, somebody that can't comes from storage could flank that 
one account of that. So we'll see here in a moment there. They're getting that charge set up on the dock doorway. Uh, we'll see if they check for the uh, the container, the cargo container there. There's nobody in there, but that can sometimes be a thing. And that smoke does not get deep enough. That's going to be a detriment to them right now. That smoke was meant to go, you know, another 20 feet further in. So now they just kind of got to hold and wait off. They're just going to trade some spam shots through there. Just not a lot of chip coming out at all. Um, right now, it's just waiting for that smoke to dissipate. So, and here comes the topside push, though, by Ninja Dude. He's going to find the frag over on the Satrums. That's going to be a good start for them. Another fight being taken off. Ninja Dude gets another... Well, I'm seeing a, a double kill there, but it's going to be Red Commissar taking down Mandark. He holds on Toxic, but now he's in a useless spot. He's going to maybe have to rotate in as this push comes into office. Two members of each side there. They lose Space Crabs. He's down, and it's going to be down to Mace to take out one. Gets that kill. He's just going to try and just run around like a madman. Curb's fighting him. And the other two members of Red are just holding off, and oh they're just going to let him take it, Mace. Oh, Mace was Mace with a 5K? No, that's just a glitch kill, but he got a 4K. Mace in that office, they, they did not... This there was a brilliant crossfire by communist spacecraft and mace, and they just two v one that doorway, and the attackers melted one by one. And then you know mace was able to just rotate behind and flank them in the back, and he got another trade. And then it was just a one v one against Ninja Dude, who had the saber in this close range office, so he had to pull out his pistol, and mace just beat them in the pistol fight. So that was you know just a great crossfire by uh by mace and communist spacecraft. And I they were just able to destroy I can't wait till we get that first person view, see that Gruber highlight that he was doing work there, needless to say. And, uh, you know, that'll give the first round over to Red. So, you know, big yeah. plays there by Mace. We'll see if uh, Gua can, you know, reorganize and counter there. Didn't use up too much utility. So they're, they're still in a good spot here to push forward. However, there was a tar uh, recovered there by Mace. He grabbed one and, uh, you know, made off with it. See if that comes back to uh, play a factor here in the next map as we enter into C store. So pretty, yeah. uh, pretty standard C store layout as far as it goes. We do have that fully isolated teller though. That's a, a, yeah. a rather also, unique thing we haven't seen. This much teller of also has a, a a tiny little hole that can watch the south side of the map. So if they wall charge here, they can get blasted from the teller hole. Um, the, the, the attackers are down a clacker, so if they do a wall charge, it could be risky. They could be losing their last clacker. So, you know, it, it is a big risk to take um, a, a, a clacker here because if the, you lose one and then red team will know that you have to go green on the last map, which will be very devastating with just barbed wires and whatnot. Um on this map, it, the power is pretty deep within the the site. It would be really hard unless you door charge this arcade. And you know, this map just seemed pretty standard. You know, um, in close door, red doors to the bomb, and you know, just the big shutters with a. Yeah, and it looks like both teams are gonna be going in kind of naked on this one. Not seeing any deployment of barbed wire or anything by red. Uh, they do have the bathroom super shoddy, which can be a factor later on. And again, we see Mace with that tar. So here comes the door kick. Flash pain goes out. A little bit of a wall bang coming in there uh, from the top side. Ninja dude trying to get some spray off. And they've got entry in here. So it's a good start off. But here comes that auto shoddy. Auto shoddy blasting its way through, doing a lot of chip to three members. And there goes the frag, though. Oh, no. It gets a TK, but he does get the kill onto the super shoddy. So that's at least and good. And Satrum's now. wall bangs kills AJ. Oh, no. It's now just all down the ninja dude. He's just been stuck up there trying to spam through that window. He's going to try and make his way out. Mace is going to cut him off at the corner, though. And Ninja Six is going to go in anyways. Gets one kill. Gets a second kill, though. Can he do anything here? He's got one hit point. I mean, he's th and that's yeah. going to do it. Just the pistol comes out there. Satrams gets the final kill. Um, got a little iffy there, though, but then I looked at that health and realized Ninja Dude didn't have a whole lot to work with. So uh, Red taking that second round. Now they're up 2-0 on the defending side. So definitely uh, seeing Red coming out strong here um, on defense. It seems like uh, we have to actually restart this uh, match because um, there seems to be we probably did a wrong build and this build is um, has rubber band networking issues. So we might have to restart this match. Um, 
it's very unfortunate, but uh, you know, that's what happens when you just ship the test build and you didn't test things beforehand. Yeah, we might end up going over to the official build. We'll find out here in a moment. Uh, it's kind of up to the players' call um, at this point, but uh, I think both teams agree to restart. So, okay, we are now restarting. Uh, yeah. Okay, we are now gonna go on break to uh, switch servers, I believe, or redo this build. Um. Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are uh, we're sorry for that little hiccup with the server. Um, we are now restarting. Um, you know, and the servers should be good again. I hope. <laughs> Big hope there. Yeah, we had a had some problems. According to the players, the lag was just insurmountable. We're on the current build of due process, but in and order to do competitive play, um, we had to do a little work around. Yep, and uh, looks like uh, it's the same map again. So you know, Qu Qu Cresting Wolverine, um, Factory, and let's see if. But and the teams are exactly the same: red on defense, Glock on attack. So you know, the teams have info now. Basically, like they know what they did last time. They know what what failed. They know the site, the angles now. So. So we'll see if that same strategy tries to come out again from Glock. They had gone with the idea of smoking off alleyway and then pushing into office. 
didn't work out as uh, Mace originally had a 4K, and then unfortunately that's kind of suddenly erased from his stat lines now. Um, we'll, we'll keep it in our uh, memory. So oh, we're, we're going to be uh, waiting for our spectator to get back in here. Uh, easy anti-cheat is a hell of a drug, needless to say, but uh, we'll give you the breakdown here. It looks like a, uh, a similar push is still underway. Um, it seems like time... the attackers are not going to go through dock, dock, though. They're going to go through storage, and um, they're going to blow the west side toxic door. And get the power. Oh, it's um, not even a push in a storage. So there's a window there in storage. It looks like they just want eyes to clear out storage. Yeah, and it they're all four members of Red Team are on the east side of this map, not watching the power. So if they go in strong through this red door, they could easily get the power. And there's only one road flare for the defending side. Yeah, so we see Mace this time on the knack instead of the Gruber. That's one of the only differences in weaponry that they have brought out. Uh, Space Crabs is the one rocking the Gruber this time. Uh, but here comes that topside push into a Toxic. They're not going to have any contention early on. Uh, their closest contact is going to be Red and Satrams. Taking a peek through the door. There goes a lot of chip damage on the Satrams. He's got to get out of there. Or I'm sorry, that's on uh, Red Commissar. He's uh, taking a lot of chip there. And now through the wall, Satrams goes down. Uh, Curve just getting a, a good shot at him. And there's already two members of Red down this time. They're just huddled up on the bomb. Smoke onto the site as they're trying to play around it. And here comes Curb pushing in on his own. Gets neutralized on the Commissar. Finishing him off. Can. Can watches him come around the corner and doesn't fire. He was hoping that he could just be unnoticed. And then Mace goes down in the, on the back line, and it's going to be a 5-0 members left alive in favor of Glock this time. They yeah, just... um, that was just, you know, there was, you know, like I said, there was only one player watching that power, so they just five-man through it. And then, you know, five people shot at Red Commissar. He took massive damage. And, you know, once that happened... Also, Mace threw the molly to cut off the, the push, but Curb just runs past the molly, and Cad Monkey is not aware that Curb pushes through the Molotov, and then he gets a massive flank, kills Cad, and starts the bomb defuse. And now Mace is uh, confused in the smoke, and he actually runs into his own Molotov into four attackers. You never want to do that. So, no. you know, there was just... You know, the the five-man rush with the flashbangs was just unstoppable, basically. So, looks like uh, the Uno reverse card got played there heavily. Uh, Glock showing what they can do, and cleanly at that. I mean, that was the big thing for me on that round, is that the, they had five members left alive. So, that means they keep a lot of the utility. They're not down a clacker. They don't have anything that they've technically yeah. lost. Also, other than they, they kept... The, they didn't even take night vision. Uh, that was very interesting. I mean, the power was right there. I thought they could definitely take it, but you know, I guess they decided that they wouldn't need it. And now they're just going to have the power for C store. Um, this is not. Uh, now we are on um, a kill house though. Uh, Invictus fist, and you know, it has a, it has a very you know, there's this green door into this parking garage, but. In order to get to the bomb, you must rotate all the way around. It takes forever to get to the bomb. Or you can go in very fast through kitchen. And, you know, there's always, you know, interesting wall charges into lockers, which... Yeah, we saw some wall charges marked up there on the uh, on the right side of garage early on. So that might be something that we see coming in from Glock. We'll have to find out. Though it does look like they're just going for a straight green door push. Um not they had they didn't really use a whole lot of utility last time other than one door charge so i guess they're going to save that for the final map just in case not a bad call there um but the possibility all, is always around yep. finally um, seeing some barbed wire being deployed though by red they're going to try and use up yeah. a little bit more of their it utility. seems like the defenders pr predicted this uh wall charge explosion with this uh little marking um if they do wall charge in this barbed wire will stop them from just rushing to defuse the bomb and you know they have four members in the bomb so they are definitely wall adequate for a, just a rush into the bomb Ooh, oh no ninja Saturn. dude predicted predicted Saturn that was just you know saturn's peeking with the mop and he just gets instantly lasered by the saber uh, so there. five man entry here clean a little a little bit of damage coming out though there goes the wall breach that we talked about now as they come in onto the right side of lockers 
two mollies being deployed though and it's gonna be guac mandar getting the kill over in a maze so now red's falling back three members and they're kind of just pushed a little bit off the bomb though there's no risk of a defuse at this time but a lot of wall bang damage is going to be coming out i mean there's no reason that guac needs to push in right away especially with the smoke deployed there goes curb now finally over onto where mace's body was and so they're getting getting a four-man stack on this one side curb's gonna have contact here in a moment but he, he gets shot in the back by his teammate mandark that's not what you need to see and now it's just a firing line set up either side of the bomb it's gonna be space grabs going down the side now side gets traded off by cad monkey fire back and forth by both sides it's a three on two in favor of guac still but mandark's pretty low he, he's gotta watch out here one bullet will take him down and so we're seeing a flank here though this, this could be big here but they hear it they hear it coming. Red's on the backside watching for this. There comes the peek around the corner. He gets the first kill. Oh no, it's a two on two. Ninja Dude comes around the corner and now he's facing off on Can Monkey. Can Monkey, the last one left alive, can't do it. Gonna be the defuse. A lot of damage yeah. done there as we see uh, barely 100 health left. You know, that was Fine. so brave by Ninja Dude. He just immediately rushes past Cad Monkey and shoots Red in the back. And, you know, I don't think Red was, Cad Monkey was expecting that. And, he just was not able to finish off Ninja Dude before, you know, Red gets taken out. And then it was just a 2v1 against Cad Monkey. And, you know, he has a shotgun, so not the most effective range at that point. And now the attackers are looking very strong. They have two door charges and the mop now. So it's looking very good for Guacamole now. Yeah, and I think if Red doesn't get killed there, um, if Cad Monkey gets a frag over on the Ninja Dude... All of a sudden, things are switched around. Even though it's a 2v2, you've still got, you know, that strong presence there by Red holding the doorway, and he potentially gets that frag and moves it around to a 2v1 in Red's favor. So, I mean, very well, very ballsy, to say the least, to make that run across. Just like, you know, I just know where a guy is. I don't care where his partner is. I'm going to get that one kill, and that's exactly what he did, and that ends up winning them the round. Yeah, now we're going to move on to C-Store. The attackers have two door charges. They kept their clacker. I, they have, um, they still have their frag grenade. They have night vision goggles. They have so many options they can do on the C-Store. Um, this is actually... Very interesting setup here. Tellers is huge in this with power in there as well. So Yeah, this is well, like... That, um, that could be a huge focus there from the attacking side is to rush that teller and get also, the... Uh, these um, shutters are not that interesting. Uh, I... In my opinion, I mean, most of the, I mean, if you wall charge, I mean, door charge for a peak hole in the front, you do see a, quite a bit of sight. But, you know, the defenders could always just hide in these little, like, deaf corners and just be perfectly safe if you door charge uh, shutters. When you door charge sh um, shutters on this map, there's not many sight lines that you can see. And so it seems like the more um, versatile players would be these red doors. So it seems like Red is going to keep at least one player up on K Arcade looking through that storage window just to see if any of the attackers come in through that north side there. He'll be able to have that view. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to see a pretty strong, uh, just near the center of the bomb setup here. I mean, there's not a lot of places for uh, Red to hide and to sit in the corners and all that to have it a useful advantage. So we'll see what they can do here. It might be a case of where they have to wait for that first push to come out and then make their move. Uh, yeah, this, they, they can't this, really preemptively attack. This is barbed wire, I believe, will not get blown up by this red door. So if they and their plan is to blow up shed, so this barbed wire could very sl slow down this push dramatically from Guacamole. This with this uh, barbed wire placement and freezer. So we're seeing that slow, methodical push coming in. Do you have uh? the door charge getting ready to be pushed out and there it goes so smoke goes onto the side i don't know if they saw the barbed wire there though but that smoke's not helping them in the slightest so they're just gonna have to wait for that to kind of uh, fade away i think that was meant to be a little bit deeper in there blocking off teller um but it's just gonna be a wait right now uh for that smoke to clear no damage really to speak of a little bit of chip coming out against uh, the attacking side here so not much to play off of there but here comes the first push in and it's gonna be Sai. he just goes down now, i mean just zero zero damage delivered back and uh that's already a man down there so top side push though flank coming in gonna be ninja dude coming in with the op though i can't uh, with the mop i can't imagine that's gonna be an easy weapon for him to use and satriums can flank them right now 
if he just comes through this doorway uh, unexpectedly, uh, that could be a bad, bad news for them. But it looks like they're going to kind of fall back and maybe be worried about that door. We'll see if Ninja Dude just decides to spam it at this point. Because uh, that could be a, a thing there. But Cad Monkey now goes down in the meantime. Is it making its way through office? So complete reset. But there's a double kill coming out with Mace. Triple kill. He has wasted four members already of this attacking side. Yeah, and that... he's hungry for more. And, you know, Ninja Dude just has a mop, and I don't believe he has enough bullets to kill each member. And so this is going to be very rough and a very hard clutch for Ninja Dude. The timer is running down here at this point. Not much he can do with that little bit of health left. But it's going to be the push coming in. He does get one kill. Has his pistol out. Gets a second kill. But that'll be the end of it. And four kills for Mace on that round. Just absolutely devastating. Uh, what was that, an eight yeah, this is... Um... <laughs> this this barbed wire completely stuffed this this push by um by guacamole. So they were forced to take the huge time disadvantage to rotate around. And you know, after rotating around, you cost a good thirty seconds. And so they were pressed for time, and they had to just rush in. And Mace was just able to, and they lined up for Mace, and Mace got a two for one kill. And you, with the red commissar supporting with the KR. He just completely melted the first attacker and killed the one behind. Yeah, that was the second time we've seen a uh, possibly misplaced smoke by uh, by Guac. So we'll have, have to keep an eye out, make sure that's not you know going to be an issue for them. Because um, it looked like they wanted to get that maybe a little bit deeper and have room to peek that first doorway, and it just never happened. And they had to do a full reset here. But we are switching sides. It's going to be red on the defense. I'm sorry, red on the attack now. And uh, we'll see what, what goes on here. Yeah, this is a very interesting uh, power because it's actually blocked by these little boxes. But you can not just run across this toxic, take 50 damage, and get the power very quickly. Um, it would be very interesting to see if anyone wants to take this damage for their team and you know, press the button. Yeah, we haven't seen too much power pushes on this kind of map. Power on a first round factory isn't all that common simply because you don't want to risk giving up your NVGs that early uh, because that can come back to bite you later on. NVGs on C store for defenders, uh, that can be uh, some bad juju. You know, you, yep. you sit there and you flick the lights off as soon as there's a breach, and now you've got the advantage. Yeah, so. but you know, that is also, even if you, even if the defenders win and you take night vision, usually you'll get a couple kills in the defenders, unless they have all four people alive they won't get four nvg so you know it is a, a mild risk but you know it's not usually always going to be like the if you lose this round you're going to give the defenders four night vision they usually only get one or two and that's only semi useful for c store like a last man like stand situation but you know the um, from red team it looks like they're going to actually just go, go through a full eco no charges and they're just going to get the power it's going to be heavy use of the TARS, and we're going to see uh, the, the big gun on Satrium's hands. See if he can't get some kills there. Uh, not much of a counter that they can do against this. There, there's some long-range weaponry being held back in alleyway, but uh, range battle right now is going to be in favor of the attacking side. Red's going to have this, and Curb's in trouble. He's got to get out of there, and I think it just, he just had a flashbang land on his face. He ran out, but gets shot in the back by Mace. So right now, Vash uh, is trying to trade some some frags over there, but not a whole lot coming out of it right now. You see this long range hold from Office. I think uh, they need to, Guac needs to push out of Office. They need to get some different angles, maybe get a guy flanking. But that is being held back right now by Satrams and Space Crabs. They so now be all four of them come. Four members of Red are going to be coming around through storage. So there's the first kill though. That's big on Mandark. Gets a frag over onto Space Crabs, and now he's got that angle held. We'll see if Satrams is going to go for the slow peak here. A lot of chip damage coming out, and Red, they're low. They got three members that can be like one tap at this point. And there goes the first kill. Cat Monkey's down. In favor Red, of Red Watt. steals the flare. Now they don't have light on the south side of the map, and the north flare ran out. The defenders are in complete darkness now. Oh, but here comes some counter frags, though, coming out. Ninja Dude and, and Vash are both on the bomb side as Satrams makes his way in. Doesn't really have the gun to take this close range fight. It's going to be on the mace to kind of make a move in here, but they are starting to pincer this. And there goes the first kill, though, on the. On the, <laughs> the Satrams goes down, though. He's just not going to be discharged by mace. That's not what you want. Time is running out here, but there's still plenty of it. 
Fash has moved out. The bomb of the fuse is being tickled, but not enough for it to matter. Shotgun versus tar. It's mace on the bomb. And here and Vash is just toying with him. Gets the shot off, though. The one tap from the shotgun, close range. That seals the round. Puts three on the board for Guac, and they are looking good right here on the first round of defense. Yeah, I think um the you know the the power you know curb got even though curb was the first one to die he did massive damage with this aggressive push he got uh, I think a, a one or two headshots and he uh, did massive damage to the attacking team and they were just very hurt just to push it was really hard to push when they were so low and you know it was just. It was just a health disad, and they had to just push into. And you know, Guacamole did bring two flares for the two choke points that the attackers had to go through. So the defenders could actually see that it when the attackers pushed. For yeah, both it, was, choke. it just became a case where it didn't look like Red was in that bad of a situation, but then you saw those health bars, and they were low. They were very, very low, and it just came down to a one-on-one -on -one battle. But it was that shotgun, you know, playing the big part. You just at that range, if you don't miss, it's it's going to be a kill, even on a full health um, attacker there. And you know that was that was brilliant for them. They pull out that third round. So we are uh, back over onto Kill House again. We'll see how this plays out. Um, yeah, but the defenders, um, I mean, the attackers now did do an eco, so they have all their charges left. And you know, the even though they lost their night vision, only one night vision got stolen. So the, there is no, there probably is low risk of a uh, turning off the power in C store. Yeah, I wouldn't expect to see that at all. The only problem with this map, I can say as a whole, is that whole north side is kind of useless. Training in an office, I don't see as being much of a um, a factor in this map ever. Just like uh, this, this it's training semi useful training. If you if you use this courtyard window, you can completely clear this side, and then you can just throw a flashbang right here, and then you can get in through training, and then just instantly get into the bomb very quickly. It, I mean, training is much closer than walking all the way to down the kitchen. So, so it looks like from what I'm guessing here on this, they're gonna push some members here in the garage, but also on that red door at the same time. And they might try to pincer who's ever stuck in kitchen. It looks like they're planning on getting a nice, you know, long side of view, slight, look, long sided view into garage. Uh, but there is a long range weapon in there on the defending side. It's going to be Ninja Dude with the mop. So he's going to go for that early, like, one shot pop. We'll see if he can get it here or if he gets traded. Uh, this could be big. And Satrams is going to be the one to meet him first. There goes the shot. It misses. That was, that was something that they needed here. Red uh, is going to be in a rough situation. I'm sorry, uh, Guac is going to be in a rough situation now that they know that the mop has been deployed. And here comes the push on that red door. Adrian's got to be careful. Flashbang goes out. And he's potentially blind here, but two members coming there. There's the mob shot, though. Ninja Dude gets the kill that he absolutely needed. And it was a one tap, it was a headshot. And Guac and AJ are uh, just, and Kerber, I'm sorry, are holding into that doorway. You have all four members now kind of approaching that kitchen, and now they're mollied off. So Mandark here trying to hold the top side while the other four members of his team are on bottom. And there goes the firefight through the doorway. It's going to be Mace getting the kill on the Mandark. So that top side's open now. They and Mace has the through. wall charge. He could get a devastating wall charge kill here if he blows in. And he's going for it. He's going for it. Wall charge is down. It's not going to get any kills here, but now that's open up. And it's insta kills over on the Ninja Dude. He's just dropped in the instant. Mace coming in with his third kill of the map. He has just been a force to be reckoned with. Gets his fourth kill. Absolutely. <laughs> just guns blazing the the defenders all just they just all tunnel vision the west door they just think kitchen kitchen that's all they were looking at all four members looked and you know mace just blew in holding brace fire and just mowed them down one by one and you know and then space com space crabs kicks down the door and then now curbs is in this just He's, there's a guy behind him there's a guy in front of him and he just gets completely overwhelmed it was Mace, time and time again, we've seen when he gets activated, he, he will come through and get those multi-frags uh, faster than we can call him out. I mean, he, he did that door breach, came in, and it was just instantaneously three kills. Uh, Curb was the only one able to get a counter kill over on a space crabs, but then Satrams finishes him off in the very end, gets that round over in favor of Team Red. So they're back in this now. You know, they were looking a little bit down early on. They were down three to one, and now they're uh, up, you know, or not up, but uh, back in three to two. Yeah, so and can, uh, keep this turnaround going in their favor. The defenders have now lost the mop, and 
now it's going to be um they don't have the attackers don't have night vision but they still have a door charge left so you know they definitely do have a lot of do have a good amount of resources for this storefront push um we saw what happened last time uh, guacamole went to went shed so um if guacamole thinks that the shed is too hard to push then they might think that um red team is going to go through office so if they if guacamole does the counter plan and thinks oh shed is hard to push then that means they're going to go through office they could you know put a barb here and just stuff this office push you know we're seeing some markers coming out for that top side storage side but i don't wonder if uh the attackers here will make their way all the way around their map and try and come in that way because then they're not giving up visual from that storage window there could be a member sitting there watching that and you know, all of a sudden get caught by surprise. It's like, wait a minute, they never crossed my sights. How did they get in here? Uh, but we'll see. We'll see here momentarily. Uh, yes, Which but... Um... Decent amount of utility being put out. Bathroom is going to get its uh, fair share of barbed wire and also arcade. So they're going to... They are predicting this topside push. So storage is being blocked off on both entryways. So this this could be really good in favor of Glock here if they get this barbed wire down and they're not countered. Yeah, but they completely left this office open. So, you know, if they just, if they don't have enough people in storefront, they could just, red team could just blow office, have five people just run into storefront, and then then they just have, they have bomb control, and then all the defenders have to rotate around. Uh, it seems like Guacamole does decide to put a barbed wire to stuff this office door. Uh, last second uh, plan change is a good idea. And. So, yeah, there will there will be that change. They're gonna leave the bathroom storage doorway open. Barbed wire now just in the middle, blocking off storefront. That's a good call. Uh, it's gonna be uh, AJ there with the auto shotty, so he's gonna be up close, uh, giving defense right on the bomb itself. But it's gonna be that southern side push, and they're in the storage now. Smokes out, two members in the storage, three more coming in through office. It's gonna get flanked. A lot of damage coming off. He's just pinned in the corner, and Satrams is going to neutralize him in an instant. But here comes that auto shotty. A little bit of chip damage out. Nothing big to write home about so far. Attacking side and making their way around the map. It's Team Red spreading themselves out, and it's going to be the push in the arcade. We'll see what Mandar can do. He just gets flashbang. He doesn't know where he's at. And here comes the kill. It's going to be Spacecraft onto him. Spacecraft can't get the kill, though. I don't know what happened. He was... Mandar was completely blind. He gets that kill, and now they're onto the bomb side. Auto shotty coming out. Gets the kill, Red Commissar going down, and now Satrams is down. AJ doing work with that, and it's just all down to Maze making some spam shots through the walls. And uh, no, no, Mandark, oh no, he, he goes for the fight and gets and gets canceled out by it. So it's Auto Shotty versus Maze with the tar. 1v1, we got a minute left in this round, and uh, there's there's some decent damage over on the Maze. Uh, a glancing blow from this Auto Shotty will do him in, and it's just AJ who's got to wait. Oh, there goes a few shots so over onto his position, doesn't get hit. Flashbang goes out. We'll see what he can do here. Auto Shotty gets the win. AJ coming in with a 3K, saves the round, puts <laughs> puts his team on the brink of a win here. Four to two in favor yeah, of Yeah, um, Satrams uh, and Cad just ignore... Uh, they throw a flashbang, but they don't actually clear the tight corner in Arcade. Uh, and Spacecrafts decides to check it, but by the time that he checks it, the flashbang wears off, so he actually loses that fight. And... You know, and then they were just, and then Cad Monkey just got flanked from behind. So that was just, after, even though they were, they were able to press the button, but, you know, the, after they immediately died for that because they did not kill the, the one flanker. And Yeah, even and then, from uh, the, the top above view, we could still, you could see clearly that that one member was Flash, and he's just staring at his feet like, you know, where yeah, am but, I? And he comes out of it and just sees, you know, an attacker right in his face. He's like, I'll deal with that. Yeah, um, so, you know, just Satchrams, the, 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 I think the Satchrams and Cat did check that corner, but, you know, just a tiny, a one inch too, a little deep, and they just barely missed him. So we're back around onto Crusting Wolverine. It will be Glock on the attacking side here. So we'll see if they try and go for broke. They have three chances here, essentially, to win... Uh, this set here, and uh, well, three chances for Red. To yeah, the and night. Red team. Red team has to be, you know, on their toes. They cannot make a single mistake. You know, it's match point for this game, and um, it seems like the the attackers are going to use a a, a door charge onto 
fan and just rush into the bomb this is you know the fan has not been used before on this map so it'll be very interesting to see how uh people will be able to use the fan it seems like they actually scrapped that plan and are going to go it's, it's remarking out okay so they're looking like they're gonna try for a double smoke and completely triple smoke okay so they're they're well i don't know about that top side smoke that might be a that's a little iffy call if you've got the both bottom sides uh smoked yeah. off. you don't really need so you can still get shot from this which is uh you know yeah, they can I... still get shot from this office door this office catwalk these office stairs that can someone can jump off this this and stand in the window and shoot them it's like it doesn't seem like they're they have people oh, i mean there's only uh, luckily but look at this it's the double super weapons setup space crabs and state trams auto shotty auto shotty on the side he's within an inch of somebody does it does he get the kill yes he does space tram space grabs does get that first kill but now aj's in in on there gets the kill the, the auto shotty's down it's down to three members mace state trams and red commissar left alive it's, they're on the bomb side they haven't started tickling the bomb there it goes the first tickle and it's gonna be the kill over to red commissar state tram he's got the mop he's trying to fight in close it's not gonna work out for him and it's all down to mace mace versus aj can he get the kill Oh, the reload, and it comes through. And Mace, it's with one HP, clutches out, gets a 3K. Mace does not let his team down on this round. On the brink of defeat, he comes through with the one health. And, uh, I mean, that's as close as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, yeah, he, Mace, he, has, Mace, he picked up the super shotty, so he's going to carry that into the next round. Yeah, they're, Mace they're just... on the ropes. Mace, Mace gets the, the gets the pick, and then he 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 beats the sniper, the saber in a one v one, and then he rushes in close range of an Igmar, and still you know comes out on top. Just insane plays by Mace. Just the 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 defender strategy with that auto shotgun in the bomb was actually very good. It seemed like the the attackers thought they could just rush into the storage container and start the defuse, but you know, common spacecraft had a different plan and. They, they walked into that door and they just ate lead. And he just got complete. So that was a lot of utility used up by the attacking side here, by Quox. We'll see if that doesn't come back to bite them. You know, yeah, they are, they are down a door charge and a clacker. And, you know, the attackers saved, I mean, the defenders saved their wall charge now. And and so you know if the if the attackers decide to use their clacker and they lose this round they could just they they won't have any charges left for the uh, sea store so it is really a uh, interesting gambit of whether you just go all in on this round or you just play this round safe and then you go all in on sea store so it'll be interesting to see what the attackers are gonna plan so this is a somewhat predictable strategy and it's not a bad one here if I was red, I would almost at this point decide to use office. Keep a member up in office ready for that flank because you know they're going to go for that wall charge. You know they're going to put in the push in the kitchen at some point, whether it's through red door or through the top side. Keep a guy on office. Get that flank in. I mean, that would be a big play right here. Yeah, you're a little bit separated from the bomb, but then you got to trust in your teammates to be able to hold that yeah, line also, for just a little um, bit. If they can just, if they, you just get guys in like this training area and and this training area, you could actually just wall bang garage very free. There's like no cover. The the attackers are just standing out here in the open, and you have a guy just sitting in this this lower south part of training. He can get some massive wall bang damage. And it seems like your play is right. They have two members in office ready for this flank. Yeah, and it's one of them is a super shotty on a mace. Mace can make some big plays here, and he's getting a lot of audio info here. So here comes a five man push. They're in there, and it's just going to be Mace and Red Commissar waiting for that counter push. And we'll see, and we'll see if this is predicted at all. I mean, it's, it doesn't look like anybody's staring that way. Vash maybe just a little bit watching that way, and here comes the push. Oh, Vash was waiting for it. Red Commissar goes down in an instant, and there's the push into the bottom side. Satrams goes down from the frag. Communist spacecraft's down as well. It's just two members left alive. Can Monkey trying to do a shotgun fight doesn't get anything. It's down to Mace. He gets one kill with the auto shotty, and they're starting the defuse. They don't care. They're just gonna hold him back there. He blows his bomb, and okay, the, he just. Uh, Okay. Valiant effort there from Mace. Mace Got but, off you know. a decent bit of damage, but uh, the the round will go over to Guac, and they take set one, five to three. Very you know, having two people in office was actually very smart because Red Commissar is actually able to bait his own life to make it seem like Mace was not there. 
the, the fact that Red Commissar died meant that the the attackers just thought, oh, they, there's only one person behind. Let's just go all in. But there's actually two people behind then. So if Mace was just, I think, a tiny bit faster, he could have got a much better flank. Super intelligent, though, of Guac to have somebody watching that door at the ready. Because if they're not watching, if they're just going, yeah, that's a useless top shot to that map, you know, that door opens up and everybody's facing away from it. That's that's kills coming in from Red. He's going to get, like, one or two at least. And you've still got that flank from Mace coming in. Uh, so, you know, big yeah, it's play, like, big play it's on them getting that first kill. It seems like just that um, that fight, just they were able to just get three members into lockers and you know it was just a 3v3 across that little like tiny two by two gap where the bomb was and you know it just seems like guacamole threw uh, uh some good flashes and the defenders when they peaked they just got lasered and flashed and you know it was good execution by guac and guac takes game one so they are now at a 1-0 set lead i mean for the for this set 1-0 game set I'm, i cannot speak one Oh, match lead in this set. Okay. All right. And then we'll take a short little break here, getting ready for match number two. This is Biako and Sfa on Due Process League. All right, all right, and back into the action. A little bit shorter break than we expected after we saw Guaco up 5-3 to take set one. Uh, so who are we going to set number two? We're going to try and get things reversed around here, switch the attackers and the defenders, get that advantage uh, little curve dealt with. So I believe it's going to be uh, Team Red on the attacking side first, uh, if I remember correctly. I don't know. My brain's uh, been melted after a long day, but... Uh, more exciting due process league coming to you here just momentarily as we get settled in. Yeah, um, Red now, uh, you know, they're down one game, so they need to step it up and, you know, bring themselves back, get the one one tie, and then, you know, close it out to one if they, they need a they need to win this uh game or else they just lose this set. Yeah, Red need to need to tighten up a little bit, and I think they can do that very easily. It seemed like it's been a little bit of the Mace show from them so far, and we know their players are all very skilled. Um, so 
if everybody gets firing on all cylinders, it's going to be trouble here for Kawak. You know, they, they maybe stole one away there, uh, but we were also seeing very clean and concise play from them the whole time. So it they seems are like they have also had a, a player swap. You know, Derby now plays common as Space Crabs. You know, Derby is, you know, it seems like a roster change. Maybe this will help improve their team. I know Derby plays more with, I think Derby is actually a starter and common this is. I mean, Space Crabs is a sub, so I'm pretty sure they played with Derby more often. So, so hopefully yeah, could, they... This... Could have just been a scheduling issue where Derby couldn't come in for the first map, but uh, they are here now, so we'll see how they play out here. Yeah, and um, so this is a very interesting sea store Neptune Eater. It has this um, rotation shutter if you press the teller, and um, it also has this, you know, this bomb that gets lasered from Freezer and this power that's, out, that's pretty hard to defend, I would say, and... And then a, wi a completely wide open storefront with no cover whatsoever. Yeah, if the attacking side gets in here on a storefront, I mean, there's a very limited path in here from Arcade. And that's it. That's it. I mean, if, if they get in, um, that they can hold yeah. this down very easily. And these shelves up on the top side, are going to prevent any wall spam from really making their way through onto the bomb. So we'll see what yeah. happens here. And it's, it's, it's that whole push onto the bottom side coming around for Shed. They're avoiding that top side window, most importantly. Not that anybody's watching it, but they don't know that. So they're avoiding that top side office window. And Ninja's, um, Ninja's yeah. not even going to touch the door until his teammates are there. They're going to make Guacamole this Guacamole he seems to be... Their, their plan is to open this um, this button and then just have two guys spray in from the storefront, which is... And that, no. that deleted that barbed wire. That's big right there. So here comes Red Commissar trying to trade some frags over there. Satriam's going to step. They, oh, they almost get control in there, but uh, it's going to be Mace to get that first big kill over on the curb. Evens it up. A little bit of damage on each side. We're seeing one member of... Of Glock, though, very low at this time. So they're one tappable at this moment. Hopefully, that doesn't come back to bite them in the end. I think that's uh, Ninja Dude or no, I'm sorry, it's Vash. Is Vash is pretty low on health? So they're gonna, he's just gonna run in. Can't get the fucking. I'm sorry, can't get the uh, the doorway uh, taken care of, and the Red Commissar is gonna kill him. Fire blocking him off now, and they're just gonna they're gonna reset. They're gonna try and maybe yeah, go grab them here. These two members now rotate. They realize this shutter plan is not gonna work and out there rotating around but you know there's a barbed wire freezer and derby is still watching it so red finally goes down and <laughs> it's gonna be aj he tries to get in he gets the shutter open but he pays for it with his life uh cat monkey's right there oh with that brilliant shot over on the mace mace the big player and has now deleted yeah and, but cat uh, ninja, dude, the shutter. ninja dude though uh, he's in a 1v2 he's got a one tap capable weapon there but I mean, that, you don't want to be fighting that in close range. So Cab Monkey is going to be the player to meet him first, most likely. Derby's still way in the back. He needs to come around. As the timer starts beeping, that means we got 30 seconds left. But remember, it's a 10-second defuse on that bomb. And Ninja Dude's going to make his way around, and... Oh, no, I've, uh... I've been disconnected. I don't know about I've you. I've been disconnected every... It said reason disconnecting everybody? That I believe the server dot... Sounds like a die. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, we don't know if that's a bit of a break for which team. Uh, Ninja Dude had his chance there, but time was running down. But doesn't matter. It's all for Moot right now. So we're going to have to get reconnected in and uh, have the match reset. So nothing nothing counts there, you know, except for Pride. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe Ninja Dude. I mean, it was pretty close, though. And, you know, it's just going to be now a different map and, you know, the clock. So, I don't know. Yep, that match is going to just get scrapped, but I don't know what happened. I'd never seen that error message before. And everybody was... can just yell at Bard. Just just yell Bard's name out like it's, you know, Wrath of Khan. Bard! Bard! <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll get loaded right back in here, get right back into the action before too long. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was looking a little bit spicy there for a moment. I can't say some of the strategies being used I could agree with. You saw a member run in there just to push the button on the shutters, dies for it, and then the, before anybody can make use of that, you know, the shutters get yeah. closed. Yeah, well, pressing the button there when you only have two players and that other player is not ready is, I would just say, not worth it. He basically had to sprint in, press the button. When you're sprinting, sprint to brace fire or sprint to ADS is super slow so you are not going to be able to get uh, shots off you're just going to get domed and so just pressing that button there was just not worth in my opinion 
to for your life especially since i mean it did get you know the ninja dude was able to rotate before the telebun cooldown was reset and get one kill onto mace but yeah i don't think that there would have been a chance for guac to pull that one out simply because the way the last member was running he would have had to pop through that barbed wire in freezer and that would have just slowed him down with I mean, you know, basically it, nine seconds. It, to get was, to, uh... it was very, it was doable, but incredibly hard. He would have to go through the door and get two insta headshots, and then run full speed, holding F, and then get the defuse like at the last second. So you know, it was possible, but you know, very hard for Ninja Dude. Very much so. So you're basically yelling uh, VAC uh, at that point. Looks like we're going to be switching over to production build here as the call is going out. Uh, seems like we had a few issues that couldn't be fixed with Test Branch. Um, normal stuff, as far as Elise concerned, we're used to it by now. So it will be just a few minutes as we get changed over here. So we'll be right back. Uh, it's doing, ready to go. Um, you're watching the stream and you're also, you know, playing. Please do not queue rank and accidentally snipe one of our teams if. Because, uh, you know, um, I think you automatically queue for rank now by default. So just try to tick off that rank button if you're playing right now to try to let our two teams match each other. Because, you know, no custom lobbies yet. So we kind of have to just queue snipe each other in ranked. All righty.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we, we really apologize for all these server issues. Um, we had to move to production because test was just a nightmare. I don't know what happened. Like, the servers were just, like, not connecting to the, the back end of whatever. So now we're in production, you know, it should be more stable and... You know, uh, we're back on the C store. Uh, actually, I think we got um, the same. The, is this the same map? Looks like it's the. Uh, no, no, no. This is two. We played games. this. Yeah, we played yeah. this before. Yeah. So yeah, they these teams have played this map before. They played against each other, and you know, last time it was a you know a shed push that was failed, and then last another time it was this office push that also failed. So. Let's see if the attackers can win one of these these maps because they've lost both times on this map. Very much so. So, like I said, a little bit of technical issues, but uh, glad to be back in here. Uh, you don't have to blame Ozzy Mandias for this, but you can definitely think it's his fault. Yes, <laughs> so, blame we'll see, blame Ozzy. Uh, we'll see what they do here as a plan. It looks like it's going to be that storage push. Don't know if that's, again, if they're going to make that big, long roundabout route all the way around to avoid storage window up there. That's something that we've seen done already. Um, I this is not a very good peak window, though. I mean, you this it's like kind of, it's okay-ish, but like you can only basically peak from um, the south side. You can't really peak from the west side because if you peak from the west side, you are going to get domed when you run away. And Yeah. I think if the shelf here was just a, a millimeter shorter and you could get that line of sight through that way um, from yeah, bathroom, but... then that double angle threat would make it a little bit more viable. So it looks like it is going to just be a straight push across. Two barbed wire getting put out, so that's going to be... Uh... Yeah, for um, guacamole does not have any barbs on the bathroom office side. So And that's the side the red team is planning to go through, so... You know, they have basically won't have any contestion uh, for this barbed wire. So the, they, they do have no super weapon here. And so that's something to make note of. They're saving that for later rounds. Very crisp setup, though, from them. They're just going to be waiting around. They're not making any pushes, trying to be too aggressive. Three man stack coming in through office. Uh, we'll see if that is going to be anything to contend with. Mace is just holding that top side, though. So there can't be a flank maneuver at this time. He's going to swap places with Derby, though. Mace going to maybe make his way through. We're finally seeing that office push. There goes the wall breach. The curb is taken down by it. And here comes the fight. Big time fight. And Mace is going to be taking a little bit of chip damage, but it's going to be Commissar going down. Satram so counters that with a kill on the AJ. Kills going back and forth. It's now just a two on one. Oh no, it's all left down to Ninja Dude. And do they know where he is? Yes, they do. It's going to be Satram's taking the fight with him. A lot of damage coming out. And well, no, he's going to have to back off. He's going to have to make his way around. The bomb defuse is coming in. Do they know he's coming from this way? Satrams is going for the defuse, gets a little bit of tags. And then you do get some off of it, and they're in a fight now, but that bomb is like 70% done. Uh, here it comes, another tickle onto it. Gets the first kill, but it's going to be Cad Monkey in the end. The AP25 coming in to save the day in, in nice, round one. Nice three kill by, 3K by Cad Monkey. And, you know, Mace bringing this wall charge, you know, Curb did not expect that. They thought, you know, first round eco, that's what most teams do. And they just get, he gets wall charge in the back, and then, the attackers flanking from the south, they flanking from the north, and you know, um, the people defending bomb guacamole, the defenders were just completely overwhelmed. Yeah, very much so. So again, one of the things we mentioned, it can't be the Mace show. It cannot be all about Mace doing all of the action all the time. And Cad Monkey, uh, he's going to be the one to take up that mantle in the first round. Comes through with that three K, like we said, and uh, including the final final kill there over onto ninja dude and gets the round saved for them so they're gonna go up one nil yeah and now they save the clocker so they can now do a charge they can do one door charge every single round this allows them to have huge amount of options compared to being forced to go being having to do an eco round so All now right, they so. have now they have now we're moving on to factory uh, on half storm and this is a very wide open, very low amount of cover kind of factory. I mean, this conveyor area, there's just like, there's basically nowhere to stand other than behind this like box side on this conveyor. I mean, this box like mountain built by the bomb. And you know. So, it's so one thing to note here is bomb is a long ways away from any entrance. There's going to be no rush capability. And even a dock push, 
Uh, you got all the conveyors to deal with, so it's not a very safe approach. I mean, um, this is going to come down to having to get kills before anything. You know, you're not going to see a You can shoot. actually smoke rush semi viably. I think if you like smoke this office door, throw a smoke on the conveyor, have five man push the bomb, and you know, if their defenders are just stacked in the office and they don't, I mean, defenders are stacked in the office and they don't push out and they have to push into the smoke, which you don't really want to do. Uh, I could definitely see. A smoke rush capability if because you have no sight line onto the bomb if you're in office but you kind of need to have this office because it gives you the high ground it lets you protect the power so very much so i'm, I'm making one prediction from this round uh the central boxes here in top of conveyors i'm predicting at least one ring around the rosie fight here that is my call for this map here is a ring around the rosie of those boxes because it's it's just too good right it's too good uh, but we are going to see the dock push potentially down here, so maybe I won't get to see that unless the two topside players uh, make their way in there. So it's going to be, well, no, they're three men on the bottom are actually making their way around the fan. So it's going to be that split 3-2 pincer move that we see a lot of teams rely on. Mace walking slowly, probably trying not to give up any audio cues on his way around. Very smart of him to do that. So here comes that first push, but Ninja Dude right in the corner there. Do they check it? Do they check Ninja Dude? They come in, it's going to be the fight coming off, and one kill coming out. Satrams all the way from the from the fan. He gets that kill over on the Ninja Dude. Ninja Dude did get one kill to start though, so that's an even trade four on four now. And we see all members of Guac just kind of backing up in the conveyors and offices up there. So they're gonna give give room here for this red team to push in. They're gonna get control of Toxic, uh, but we'll see how much more they can get out of that. Mace making his way in, so it's gonna be all four members in now. Mace gonna take that topside push. There is barbed wire blocking his way though into the offices, smoke being deployed over on the AJ. Auto shotty, he can't go down. He's got to keep that auto shotty up no matter what. And he's going to hide in the smoke now. Oh, here comes my rig around the rosy. Here it comes. Auto shotty coming in, gets the first kill on the red commissar. Can he get the second one on the satrams? A lot of damage, gets it. Finally taken down over by Derby, but it's going to be down to Mace. Mace gets taken down on the top side, and it's just Derby left with the tar. He's facing off against two members, three members left alive over for Guac. Block looks like they got this one maybe in the bag. Derby I, would just, just, kind of I would just grab the auto shotgun and dip. Like, how are you going to win this with five HP? And and that's a, yeah, that's a good call there. The HP on Derby is very low. He's creeping around. Uh, Mandark in a corner, curb above him. I mean, as soon as he you know even makes a squeaky footstep, uh, they're going to all be on him in an instant. And there goes the peek around the corner. Mandark gets the kill. Beautiful plays there, and it's just. You know, take a little, give a little, and uh, come out on top. For, yeah, um, for the auto shotgun is usually never expected on um, this map, and I don't think any other weapon could have just walked in, walked just do two K, walk through that smoke, and just shoot two members in the back. It was just very unexpected. They had all three members just watching that um, right side. No one was watching the smoke because you don't expect people to push through the smoke. Like it's, it's just not expected usually. And you know, they he pushed through the smoke, and they weren't prepared for it. Yep, so here we go. Last map of this half. It's going to be over on a kill house. It's going to be one of the 1.5 Axum monstrosities as well. Oh, no. <laughs> Can you understand this map? No. Uh, no. <laughs> no, it's it's actually kind of simple. It's just security. You know, you can go on the roof of security and, you know, this. So very interesting that we haven't seen before is this is this top side bomb. It's a bomb yeah, um, in the elevated position. So anybody down in bar or dance floor stage, they're not going to be able yeah. to have line of sight onto that. So that's a big oh, thing. You've got to yeah, keep they, guys up on top. They can, actually. I'm pretty sure you can see into bomb from stage and bar and dance floor. It's actually, it, the defenders really need to, I mean, the attackers really need to get this um, middle stage, I mean, club room control. Because if they don't, people can just hide, head glitch, hide behind that bar and shoot you while you're defusing. And, it is very it is basically impossible to defuse if people are behind that bar shooting at you. Yeah, very much so. So we'll see what kind of push we get in here from Team Red. Uh, they don't have a lot of options after losing that last round, but they do maybe have one charge to they use have somewhere. Two door charges. Two I door think. charges, but only two doors to use them on. I doubt they're going to use them both. I mean, uh, they could do the cheeky little um, trap door. That's my favorite strategy. You know, just put it on a green door. Just wait for the defender to rotate. It could always happen. So we'll see what the setup brings here from us. Uh, pretty open map. Uh, we're not seeing too much split 
you know, differences here from... Yeah, VIP is, is a balcony area, so, you know, even the, the person with the Ikmar behind club will have a sight lines of VIP. VIP is very exposed, so... Oh, notice yeah. what notice AJ. Notice what he's got. <gasps> I didn't realize they had dropped it. So they have essentially two super weapons here on this map. And it's going to be AJ. Throws some molly, gets him to stop pushing in. So that molly will burn out for a little bit and will finally be able to make that push, though. What do we got? Mace up on the top side, creeping his way in. Let's see if that comes into play. He's going to go for a big flank on this 4 1 split. But uh, there goes the next Molly, and now they're just going to be waiting even longer. And I think they just saw Mace. They see Mace. Mace gets the first kill, though, over on the AJ. That's a super weapon down. That's a big play by him. And now Ninja Dude's, like, on his toes here. He's going to have to worry about Mace coming up behind him. I don't know if Mace can peek down there and get that, that frag there. The curb taken down in an instant. It's going to be Derby and Sage Rams both coming in to chime on that. Bomb room being kicked open. They're going to make their way in there. Vash is going to make his way up on the backside. There's four members already in the bottom room area. Vash, he's going to have to get some kills here. And Fast gets one, but then instantly taken down. Single shotgun blast from Derby will seal the round. And uh, we're going to see that 2-1 scoreline popping up in favor yeah. of Team Red. Yeah, the attackers were incredibly patient. And, you know, Mace was able to just shoot, shoot the defenders in the back. And, you know, he got this very impressive kill from on top of security all the way. They killed... Um, AJ. Yeah, AJ with that saber should not have gone down early, not at that range, but that just gives you uh, an idea of the type of shooting that Mace is capable of. He just had a tar, and he just looked through that long-range window and just went pop-pop, and that was the end of AJ. So that was something they lost very early into that round. That could have been a big factor later on. So we're going to be switching sides here. It is now going to be Team Red on the defense. We're going to be seeing Guac bringing out their attacking side here. Starting off with Factory. I'm sorry, starting off with Sea Store. What am I thinking? Factory. It's like a factory for yummy snacks, right? So, what have we got here as far as plans are concerned? Um, yeah, it's we actually, you know, this is the the you know this teller is very important. It has both the power and the shutter fun, and you know, this freezer also can watch this bomb, the fuse, and you okay? You, know, you, you taking a little nap on me? <laughs> huh? Hello? You, were you taking a little nap on me there? You kind of chimed in suddenly. Woof. No, no, no. I was just, you know, I I don't know what happened. I don't know why I wasn't speaking. Uh, I don't know. My mic cut out or something, but I was it's speaking the whole the time. End. And, um, you know, it seems like the attackers are just going to do simple eco. No, no fancy smanchy wall charges, door charges. Actually, they might be trying to wall charge into the tellers. Press the button, which would be very interesting. I mean... I don't know how worth this this wall charge is when, you know, like, the door is right there. But, you know, it is very unexpected. And you could just get a cheeky little wall charge kill. Quite possibly, yeah. Well, So we'll see how they split this up. There's not too much marking on the map for us to go off of what they're predicting. Uh, but if they put, like, three or four guys down to the bottom side, I wouldn't put four. Then you're risking your entire play on one guy getting that wall charge and push button onto the tellers. But... Oh, we'll see here momentarily just a few more seconds until this round starts off and we'll have a better idea so as far as weapons go nothing too fancy coming out on the defense yeah, side the, Mace with there, the there are no barbed wires for this north side so the attackers are just gonna be the, <clears throat> the attackers kind of could just breeze through they don't have to use a frag they don't have to slow down they can just you know, rush in so here they go five man stack pushing in all at once all in the same door Vash is holding off on that on that window. Tries to get a shot over on a Satrams. Satrams is gonna boogie. He's getting out of there in a hurry. Yeah, but and it's gonna be put there on one HP. Yeah, that's not where you want to be. So here they come into the teller. He's gonna make that push around the corner with a shotgun. Ninja dude, that needs to be careful. He can't push around there. Ninja dude facing off against Derby. Can Derby get that kill? Derby's on low health, but he did just do a lot of damage over to Ninja dude. Ninja dude's low as heck. It's going to be on the bottom side, though. Mandark goes down. Commissar gets that frag over onto him. He's picked up two on the round right now. There goes the flare out. Power's out, but they have a flare right there on the bottom side in the storefront as it's Vash and Ninja Dude on that top side still, and they're going to be considering what their options yeah, are. Yeah, Ninja is just trapped by Derby's line of sight. Like, I don't think Ninja can cross. I mean, unless Vash throws a flashbang to help Ninja cross, like, he's kind of just trapped. 
And he actually manages to sneak across. Derby doesn't have his flashlight on. He just manages to just sneak through. He's got to be up there somewhere, right? And so Ninja Dude making his way down. Say, Tram Ninja to being an with... actual ninja and just <laughs> passing by Derby. Oh, he's got three guns kind of trained on him. I think the longer they wait... Oh, no, never mind. That's going to be the kill coming in from Mace. Frags out onto Ninja Dude. And it's just now on down to Vash. He's got the tar. He's got a chance to do some damage here. But now with three guys waiting on him. And there goes the fire right into that doorway. Mace gets the final kill. And lights come back on. They're going to pick up some weapons. Probably save a tar or two here. So, three to one in favor of Glock. Yeah, it seems like Red Team, um, they lost oh, I'm sorry, no but in Red Team. Yeah, Red <laughs> Team lost no members, and you know, they, they, they did lose the first game, but they're bringing it back, and... We're going to go over onto the next map here. I believe now it is going to be our uh, turn on Factory. Factoria. But, yeah, um, Red just looking a little bit crisper this time around. And then, as I said, getting that team play working better in their favor. They ha always have somebody covering each other's backs. And that's exactly the kind of strategies that you want to see on this game. Uh, I don't think we'll have the ring around the rosy here, though, in the center of conveyors mm. as we get back onto Operation Half Storm. Uh, we'll yeah, see something um... different here, I'm hoping. Uh, yeah, this, I would definitely see this dock is very interesting in my opinion. It is it would definitely it completely just because literally the green and the red, I mean the green and the fan are both north and the you have to come in through basically two doorways if you go north. But if you go dock, you you if you have a split push and then you go dock, you have many more options. Uh, I think the dock play just opens up your world on attack and. But at the same time, I'm thinking if you're a defender, you kind of want to just give up storage. There's no point fighting for storage because you can get shot from the back from somebody coming up through fan. Yeah, I would but definitely. You, you can kind of just give up toxic as well. Like, I mean, there's nowhere for you to stand that's safe. I would just sit by the bomb, sit in office, you know, maybe have like two barbs watching this northern part of the main um I'm not sure if we can get a POV of it, but I don't know if that window there can see over the top of that little silo. Uh, no, that silo is taller. Okay. It's hard to tell from that top side view. It looks a little bit taller than it than the window, but yeah. Anyways. No, so I we... think that's just the, the oculation cutting off because I think it's like really tall in game. Like it's like oh, okay. super tall. So here we're going to see that one person sitting up in office on the fence, and they're just going to keep four people all the way down in conveyors. Also, it seems like the, um, the Guacamole's plan is to blow uh, docks and run into run into office, but, you know, there's a barbed wire right there, so they are not going to be able to co go into office with that barb there. I think that just might be calling for somebody to watch that angle, but we'll see here. But there goes the wall breach. Say Tramps and Red Comets are going to be the first two to make contact. Here's Mace, though. Mace on the top side with the Ignar, he's going to be able to do some work here if they uh, give him the opportunity. Once that smoke goes away, it could be a huge factor. So, oh, wow, Ninja 2, did he just get that kill through the smoke? Where did that come from? Oh, my goodness. So it's going to be... Oh, Wait, he was he on the back side. Fan. Oh, my goodness. That was a long-range shot. Brilliant play there by Ninja Dude. And now it's going to be Vash picking up the second frag over on the Can Monkey. Already two members down for Team Red. They're going to have to pick something up here, and it's going to be Satrams to find the frag over on the Vash. Still the man up, though. That says smoke is finally clear, but now it's into a shooting gallery here. All that fire being transferred right onto the dock windows. Mace has got his work cut out for him, and there goes a double kill out. Mandark and Ninja Dude both getting frags to their names, and it's going to be all left down onto Derby. He's on the top side there, just going to kind of have to wait for somebody to make a move on him, but he's got four members of Guac left alive. I don't know if he can do this. Flashbang's coming out. He's going to find that first frag, but now his position's given up. Curb's moving over, trying to make a play onto him, but it's going to be AJ in the end to get the final frag, and the defuse will come out. Yeah. Um, read two. Okay. And... It wasn't actually uh, Ninja Dude didn't need to shoot him from fan because that would be like through two walls. He actually shot him from the, the, the storage window. Yeah, I saw that at the uh, at the end there, but that's still a brilliant shot there. Yeah. That had to have been a tight angle because he yeah, got that. And it, and it was a headshot as well, so... Oh man, if I'm Amatar and I get shot in the back of the head, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, dude, who's who's covering storage? They just ran right through on me, and the guy sitting there at the top's like, uh, nobody ran through, buddy. He just got clapped in the back of the skull. Yeah, that was like a that must have been like a few frames shot, and and you know that was just 
after that happened, you know, they they were just the attackers were able to just go in with the smoke as cover and just superior um had superior health and just black tars and just won those fights. And then there was just a great flank and shot Mace. Mace was basically surrounded. One person on dock, two people in toxic pushing him. So in hindsight, when you think about it, that whole bottom side of the map, it looks like it's just a long way to push. But for defenders, it's also no man's land. So we saw a few of them just get killed wide out in the open. I mean, if you start taking fire, there's nowhere to run. There's no box to hide behind. There's no wall to, you know, break line of vision. You're just kind of out there on your own, and you're going to have to deal with those bullets and, you know, send some back before you die. Uh, but anyways, we are back on to Tempest Night here, one of the wonderful, wonderful maps of kill. Yeah, um, the defenders, I think, did they wall charge the dock or they use a door charge? I don't know if they use a wall. We can't really see that. I, I would imagine they just went with a wall charge there, so... Okay, so uh, I do believe they actually walled it, so they only have door charges left. Um, they have they went uh, full eco the first round, so they have two door charges. I don't see much use for a door charge on this map, other than you know, you know the cheeky little um, door yeah. charge landmine. One door, Very... one door charge in the VIP is about all that you expect. Uh, you know, you could see that that second door charge being put over into the office entrance, but I doubt it. I doubt we'll see uh, the cheeky play that you so want to have, but who knows? We've yeah, been wrong before. <laughs> door charge landmine. It's the, the 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 best strategy. Like you you get you trade one door charge for one kill. Okay, yeah. that's not it's not really that great. It's just it's just really funny. But so here we go. One predictable person playing over by bar, possibly uh, using that head glitch. Seeing uh, what, I'm seeing some barbed wire here outside. That's got to be a glitch on my end, but. Um, barbed wire on the catwalk there, and we're going to see a real tight hold there. Four members kind of all grouped right around the office area, able to push in at any moment, uh, except for Cad Monkey on the lower floor, but Satram's with the mop, and he, oh, oh, he's going to be hearing some footsteps there, and he's instantly going to be yeah, like, oh. Um, you know, he has this pretty nasty sight line into lobby. If they don't, if they don't smoke this, he could just dome one right as the game starts. And he's he's definitely seen some. He's he misses. He, body oh, he, gets, shot, a, he gets a body. Mandark that person has a one up. HP. Mandark in rough shape there, but we're gonna see Ninja Dude and AJ up on the top side, slowly making their way in. And AJ, AJ's looking for for Satrams. He's waiting for him to come around that corner. There goes the smoke out. Smoke's gonna block view of Satrams, but that gives away their position. And now here comes the crossfire. Oh no, Ninja with the saber kill on the mace. That's a big player down right I'm now. I'm pretty sure that was a a wall bang through office. That was actually insane. Vash coming in with the double kill. Satrams and Derby both down. There goes the mop. It's it's out of the action now, and it's just down to Cad Monkey and Commissar. Cad Monkey goes down there as Vash is gonna pick up his third kill of the round. Red Commissar though with the super shotty, he can do something here. He's got a chance to make a play, and they're Vash like, is not covering his teammate, and Red Commissar could just run in. He kills Vash, goes... and he's in a 1v1 curve point blank, and and now it's just the auto shotgun versus the saber and this close quarters engagement. If Ninja Dude, if Ninja Dude is actually gonna decide to run all the way around, it's gonna take oh, he's a looked... huge amount of time. But he's gonna get that line of sight from Bar. If if he's got the time to do this, 30 seconds left on the clock, 10 to defuse. Oh no, he's not going to Bar. He's going all the way to lobby. I'm sorry. Uh, probably gonna make his way up then to bar, but Commissar, he's he's got to be able to predict this at this point. And Ninja Dude, uh, the flank is just taking too long. I don't know if he has the time to do this, especially with the barbed wire there. That's gonna slow him down. And here, here comes Commissar, right, getting right into his face. Auto Shotty comes around, saves the day. Commissar with a 3K to save the round. Bash yeah. did everything he could with a 3K there, Bash. but it's gonna be Commissar to pick up the fourth round and put them on set point. Bash ran through lobby, you know, he got, he killed the mop, he killed Derby in office, then he killed Cat across lobby, but, you know, Vash decided to, instead of just, if Vash stayed behind bar and watched uh, Curb as he defused, he would have actually just killed um, Red, but he decided to rotate, and then that caused him to die, and then Curb had to fight the auto shotgun in point blank range, and then, you know, Ninja Dude was, like, out of position, he was trying to get the wall bang, but he misses... You know, it's pretty hard to wall bang with, you know, a rifle. So with only seven shots, so you know, it was really hard. You, I think he only had like one mag left, so you, you couldn't waste any more ammo wall bang and he had to rotate around. 
Yeah, if he has more ammo there, you see him go for those wall bang attempts, but uh, in the end, no, couldn't do it. I would have figured he would have gone for a push into bar, try and get the kill, and then he could just could have ran all the way up. He would have had time to do that. I, I'm not going to say it's a misplay going for that close range kill, but when he came around and had to deal with that barbed wire, it was just a dead giveaway of his position. Mm, I think I think going to bar though would have uh, you would have just auto lost off time. I think that was he came in he if he went to bar he would have had to spend like the an extra two three sec uh an extra like 10 seconds running like five seconds to go to bar get the kill on red then five seconds to run back and it would have been like a last minute last second defuse so you know i think the the risk was just too great to go to bar oh come on last second defuses are exciting <laughs> But, so here we know. go, uh, th at least two uh, match points, or I'm sorry, set points here uh, for Red to try and pull out this second round, and we're going to see if they have the attacking side to deal with this. Um, looks like we got barbed wire coming up in store from, well, I don't know if that's barbed wire there. That, that would make yeah, sense. but um, oh, this unless, game, unless this they're game. predicting a wall charge, but wall charge would take that out if that is barbed wire. But this uh this is like a reverse of game one. Instead of being four two guac, it's four two red and you know, guac even though they are a game up, they if they want to close this out two oh, they gotta step up and you know, it's definitely possible. They can, you know, you know, get get three game three rounds in a row, but it's gonna be very tough. Well, check this out. Guac, they're playing for the win. I mean, they have all their utility at their disposal. They're not bringing a super weapon, not even the auto shot. They're expecting to win this. And if they can win this on their limited utility usage, uh, that's going to put them in a good, you know, position to come back and maybe take this game away from from Red. So yeah, here comes um, that surge push. Ninja Dude does massive damage to the Red team. Um, red Comms was almost dead, and Derby took like 50 damage. So uh, the the attackers are hurt. Okay, here comes the flash playing Ninja Dude blind. Satrams as he checked this corner, he does gets the kill. That's important. Ninja Dude goes down there. And uh, we saw that cor same corner come into play earlier where that didn't get checked. There goes the wall charge. They're in onto the bomb site quickly. AJ trying to get some kills out there, but he can't, doesn't manage to do it. Satrams is getting the kills here for, for him inside, but he goes down. Vash on a double frag right now as three members move around. Mason behind him, though. Mason's going to be able to pincer him with Derby's help. And we'll see if Vash is able to turn around. There goes the door kicked open. And oh, <laughs> He gets one more kill from Vash. He's 3k on the round, but that's it. That's all yeah, the kills. Yeah, but the, 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 the attackers, they do use their wall charge, but now they have their, they save their clacker. So, oh, actually, wait, it's game <laughs> over. I'm, I'm like, it's game over, my dude. I'm sorry, but uh, that's going to be a 5-2 to two victory here in favor of Team Red. They even it up one apiece. So, you could definitely see that that guacamole had uh, had it in their minds if they can win this round like it's a normal round there's nothing at stake you know now all of a sudden they're in a perfect position to take it all but it didn't end up playing out for them and they ended up dropping that set five to two yeah um i mean the attackers were pretty scarce on resource they used pretty scarce resources too i mean they only had you know they only took base they had no frags they only had they had like three shotguns and you know they didn't take the saber so i mean even if they did um, lose that round, they still had a good amount of resources left. Very much so. So we're going to take a short little break here as we get set to go into set number three right here on Due Process League between Guacamole and Team Red. Yeah, hopefully the server does not disconnect for the third time.
And welcome back here to Due Process League as we get set for game number three here between Red and Guacamole. It's tied 1-1. We saw Guacamole take the first set, and now just moments ago, uh, it was Team Red coming back 5-2 to two, take that second set. So, uh, yeah, Spock, um, what do you is, think? This has been, you know, completely, I don't, I don't know, like, unexpected. I honestly thought 2-0 of Red, but, you know, it Guac proved me wrong. They, 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 they won the first game. It you know Red did I think come back with a new fresh mindset and you know they picked up Derby replacing one of their subs so they do have their more of their core roster now so I think Red is set to win but Guacamole is still very strong and you know I could see either team taking this depending. I want to see it go all the way. I want to see a five four score line. I'm greedy like that. More matches, more better. We're getting loaded in here. I'm not sure if it matters which side gets attack or defense. We'll see here in a moment. Um, but yeah, a lot of teams do have their preferences, and they're not always the same, I found. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm personally a defender. I love defense, and I think Red Team has stayed the, the same philosophy as me, where defense is the best. Um, it is literally better. You might not have 50 more health, but you know, you get to stand and defend the bomb. So first map of the day here. Well, oh, map it's of the my day favorite. Of... All South Factory. Um, South Dock, South Green Door, and you know South Fan. Where could they attack from? Hmm. So yeah, South. So so far today, we have not seen many uh, pushes for uh, Lightbox on anything. Uh, we yeah. might finally get a, a little peek at that here. This is a I map. Think there was um, that. there was that one time that um, I mean uh. There was a kill house, yeah, where they went for it. I believe, or what's it? No, 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 not Eight not four. kill house. Kill house. It, it was a factory. It was um, red team got the power, but then Guac was able to just throw two flares and just hold it down. But you know, this one has three uh, ways you can get to bomb. So they can't unless they throw all three flares. They cannot hold every uh, entrance. So we do see a lot of times uh, players like to favor a spot here on generator. If you're playing your cards right, you can peek uh, either angle here and still be in decent protection. Yeah. The problem is if you get rushed. If you get rushed, yeah. then you have to fall also, back. Also, if you throw a, a frag grenade through that north window, you can land right dead in the middle of generator and kill a player. Because, you know, the, since generator is such a strong position, people would just usually throw a frag there. And if they get a kill on generator, they can usually just push through the uh, east side. All right, so here we go. It is going to be Team Red on the attack. It is going to be Guacamole on the defense as they make their way in. On the southern side of the map, where else? And yep, uh, it's going to be an initial push into storage, as we see here. I mean, there's two green doors there. Might as well take them. No real point in blowing dock, especially when uh, there's always that risk of somebody up in offices shooting down at you. So door kick. You might be actually trying to peek and get a, a little cheeky, uh, some damage before the round starts. And he actually yeah. is backing off right now, though. He's stuck in this barbed wire, so. Well, that's not a good smoke grenade, but it's not going to go come back to hurt him. Here comes the first kill, though. Satram's taking out Ninja, dude. And it's going to be AJ trying to back up out of there, but he gets taken down. So they've taken full control of office. Haven't really taken a whole lot of damage, but it is enough that it could become a factor later on. It's a curb on the top side there. With the Yngmar, he's going to get that first kill on the Satram. Throw the frag big. grenade onto the bomb. It does not do any damage, though, unfortunately. Uh, Wait, Ashton Mandark just barely just... misses the frag grenade damage. Oh, there goes the flashbang coming out. Cad Monkey, though, pays for it with his life, and they've evened it up here. And they're all on full health, but it's going to be Mace getting the cur kill over on the curb. One more traded off. Two versus one now. It's all down on the Mace on the top side with that Saber. He can do work with this. We've seen his accuracy and his just incredible gameplay so far. So he's got a chance here. It's going to be Vash and Mandark. 
But um, there, it's a 2v1, so he will get lasered when he peeks this corner. Let's see, they are lined up for him, though, to a degree. And he gets the first first shot there over there onto Mandark. Doesn't get the kill, but now finishes it off. And it's going to be all down on the Vash. Does Mace know where he is? Oh, yeah, he's making the push. He knows where Vash is. Vash, 1v1 with Mace. Here comes the attack, and Mace with Mace, the headshot. Mace, 1 HP. No, I believe that was a double tap, but, you know... Still, the double tap was still fast enough, but the saber has very high rate of fire. So, and Mace wins with five HP down to the wire. That was insane. Oh my goodness! It does not get any closer to that, and that's going to set Team Red up in a good position, picking round one here. Yeah, they win the box rush. They 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 win this round. They they keep the saber. They they lose no. They don't lose their night vision. They didn't take a single charge, and um, you know. This is going to be very advantageous for a red team. I, I had to disagree with their setup there at the end. Um, I mean, they, they played that long-range fight against the Sabre. That's not something you wanted to do there. Yeah, um, I believe those two should have played together. Like, one low while crouched, one high, like, very far back. And if they both shot him, the second Mace peaked, the Mace would have died. Because Mace was relatively low. Or they could have just fallen back around that same corner that Vash ended up being in. But either way, it came it came down one more bullet, one more point of damage anywhere in the round, and uh, it goes the opposite way. So, I mean, close rounds, and that's an understatement, especially on set number three here. Uh, they'll take any advantage they can get, Team Red. Yeah, this is the, um, you know, no 1.5 uh, kill house, uh, or I think uh, people call this clubhouse. But, you know, it has very interesting, you know, this huge open club, club room four with this uh, b bar completely surrounding the bomb and this office that can actually see the bomb as well. Let's so, call you know, it an Exum house. Yeah, So, but there's like a many different heights. There's like the office, there's the stage, this dance floor. Like there's so many different heights and angles that are so interesting. So let's see what they do here. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's no real cover here down on dance floor, so I doubt we'll see any players playing down there. Uh, kind of a suicide pact if you uh, want to go down there and wait for somebody to peek through any of the doorways. But uh, yeah, top, um, top side of the map is probably going to be seeing more of the app action here. Yeah, the top side of the map, um, you have two spots with the, this window can see in the staircase. And then, you know, I mean, if you take the red door, you, you can go into security and walk into stairwell. Um, and then you you can be covered because people can watch on the window. So if you go through security, you're going to be probably safe, very likely. Oh, big gamble here coming out from Guac. They're deploying both super weapons. Ninja Dude on the mop and AG on the auto shotty. So there goes the door breach up top. And Ninja Dude, he's got to be careful here. He's got the mop kind of in close range. And now he switches places with AJ. AJ against a Trams. Is he going to get that first kill? No, it's going to be the mop from Ninja Dude. Brilliant shot there. He gets one in. Here comes Red Commissar pushing in on the AJ. AJ find, manages to find that frag. Or I'm sorry, it's Mandark with the double coming out. And now Cat Monkey taken down. It's all down on the mace. That round went south quickly for Team Red. As it's five members left alive for Guac, and it's just down on the mace. He's going to just try and get some exit frags here, potentially. Uh, AP25, he's going to get the kill on the back of Curb. Curb doesn't check the right direction, and uh, Mace will take that any day of the week. Uh, but still four members left alive here, and they're just going to be probably focused on keeping the super weapons, especially. So Ninja Dude way in the back there, just watching this doorway in case Mace comes through. Uh, but we've seen Mace with a shooting. He could end up taking at least one more player out at some point. They don't have to give him anything here. It's just all up to Team Guac to kind of play this smartly. And here comes Mace over on trying to peek over stage. Gets a little bit of damage off on a Ninja Dude, and they're going to back out of there. Uh, Mandar could have probably just taken a little peek around that corner and gotten the, the damage off, but he doesn't. Mace just running around and trying to basically be annoying. Oh, we saw two players getting lit up for a moment, but uh, nothing comes out of it. And Mandar yeah, goes he does get end. another pick though, so Mace, you know, just making them lose a couple of their weapons. But you know, the defenders keep both power weapons. Um, but you know, the attackers still have their wall charge. They still have a door charge. So Anna's gonna be C store, and you know how powerful wall charge through shutter is. Big thing, though, is both of those super weapons being saved, so they're going to be a, a huge advantage over to Team Quack coming in on this final round. I was a little bit worried there, though. You heard the uh, the drone getting a little bit uh, 
angry there at two members of it had decided to fire a shot there all yeah the um <laughs> derby peeks the the window and then he gets you know mopped he, he didn't expect the mop to be so close uh no one usually plays the mop at like that two feet um distance but you know ninja dude does and he gets he he's heavily award gets the uh, the early pick and you this know, is the little unique style of gameplay that we've seen coming out of Guac, where they do the, the typical first round save, they don't bring out a super weapon, but then we've seen a few times now on the second uh, second round of a half, they they brought out both super weapons on defense. Um, yeah, and usually, I mean, they take on maps that doesn't seem that good, like the wall, auto shock on that map didn't seem like, there's only a couple spots, maybe like staircase seemed like very the only useful spot, but like... Most of that map is huge and open, so like taking it is very unexpected, probably for the attacking team. But even then, we saw Ninja Dude paired right up with that super shoddy, and as members came into that doorway, it was actually the mop kill that you know opened up the round. That was kind of interesting, even though it was a semi close range engagement. You know, to see Ninja Dude, you know, competent enough to take that shot, uh, that was a big play there. Uh, got them on the off on the right. Yeah, um, it seems like. Uh, the guacamole expects this shed and then the wall charge into like tellers or wall charge into bomb but uh, you know the the attackers are just gonna do a shutter rush and if all the defenders are looking north they are not gonna be ready to be shot in the back yeah i think they still have a good good chance to uh, defend against here the big problem that you're gonna have to deal with is if a smoke grenade kind of comes out and blocks this top area off they haven't marked that and in fact i don't even know if they have a smoke grenade left after the uh, the first two maps so We'll see here momentarily as they get ready to queue up and run in. So there it is, that little jump out of the van as we get set, 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 get set and ready to go for this um, third round of the set. The auto shotgun could just, okay, the auto shotgun it will be. I was worried there for a second because the auto shotgun was exposed to storefront and the storefront blew up. He could have instantly died, but... Uh, he, he so there goes the wall charge or the door charge i'm sorry and the other oh, right in on a mandark mandark he's just pinned into a corner can't do anything there as cad monkey gets the frag here comes curb onto the top the top side gets say trams there's the so the stories mason derby they didn't expect him in that corner they they turned the corner and the auto shocker just holds them one and destroys both of them curb here is he's gonna reset he's gonna come around onto that top side Make his way back around to defend with Ninja Dude. And we see Vash and Guac, uh, AJ, both sitting in there on the, the southern side of the map, just ready for anything coming in. But it's going to be AJ going down. Doesn't get the kill over in the Cad Monkey. So yeah, and the auto shotgun up. is dead now. And both the both attackers are going to push out of the storefront and they're going to be able to just have this bomb control. Commissar a little bit low on health, but he's going to come around and take a peek through the window there. Oh, Ninja Dude misses that shot, though. That, that could have been big there. And it's low health right now for the defending side. Guac can be in trouble here, even with two members. Or a one-man advantage, I'm sorry. But uh, Red Commissar tickling the bomb. Gets the kill over the curb. Evens it up. Oh, no, Cad Monkey. Would it, was that a team kill? No, it wasn't. It was... No, Vash just peeks um, Freezer, but then Cad gets a refrag. But it's Moth 1v1. Cad Monkey versus Ninja Dude. If Ninja Dude gets the shot off, Cad just dies. He misses his shot, and now he, has, he must be, like, he's switching to his pistol. He's switching to his gun. The time's running out. Cat has to make a move. Very, very dangerous gameplay here. Ninja Dude just playing, playing time, playing the corners. Oh no, there's not going to be any time left anyways, but he's going to get the kill to end the round, and it's going to be a, a round for he Guac here, and they go up 2-1 to one here as they're going to get uh Yeah, that, um, that teller has this, you know, perfect little window to just shoot into the bomb and... You know, he, he could not stick to a fuse. If he defused, he gets shot. So, and so that was just really good. And I mean, even though he missed the mop shot, he was able to just the dap, grab the grouper, and realize, oh, hey, I just need um, I don't have time to reload. I'll just you know stick, grab the grouper, and be able to fight. And you know, uh, Cad Monkey just decide maybe he won't expect the rush, and he r decides to just rush him down. He maybe thought he still had the mop and only had a gap, but. A little bit of a fun chat between players saying they they lost their their wall charge and uh, I believe um this is the desync map with uh the one where your wall charge teleports to the old spawn um so here's why uh, you got it 
the, that issue. I was wondering why they did not wall charge storefront, but... So which side of the map do you think they're going to attack from this um, time? South. Uh, uh, I think that's a good guess, call. Big guess? Okay. Like, like, I'll bet, like, a hundred bucks south. All right. What about you? Do we have dplbet.net uh, up and running yet? No, I'm just kidding. That's that's What's never going to be a thing. I... <laughs> that is we're never gonna... gonna. We're not gonna make a sketchy lotto site with uh, yeah. where you can spin for skins. <laughs> you just get to, you you get to spin for a chance to have uh, Ozzy call you a fool. How about that? Mm. Well, maybe I'd ask him. It'll just be it'll just be spin a dev, and I'll say something like, not mean but abrasive to you. How's that sound? Mm. So Very it looks cool. like it's going to be a quick attack here. They're marking on a wall charge push from storage. Uh, we'll see how that works out. We've seen a few teams do that, and this might have to do with the fact that they know that that wall charge is going to despawn on them if they don't use it. Yeah, um, I think uh, they're just going to wall charge in, and you know, if it, but being on top of this these generator stairs on the north side, or being behind the bomb, or being on generator at all, and also you can definitely collapse from office. So you know, you can easily get flanked, and you can easily you know, they just many you have a lot of cover as the fans to stop to stop this rush. there are two members over to toxic side so that is going to be a big factor to play into being able to counter that push if they do it if they rotate fast enough cad monkey and derby if they get up to generator that'll be a hard counter to that that wall rush there uh but we're seeing the three other members of red over onto the office side with mace on the bottom with igmar and he spams off a few shots there doesn't connect that's a rare thing for mace so there we go. We're seeing that first bit of entry in there. Oh, and it's going to be Mandark at long range there with the AP-25. Gets a kill over on a can monkey. And that's going to make it wall charge onto Mace. Oh, that's big. They're, they're going to make their push in now. They just know they have the biggest advantage here. Ninja Dude comes around on the corner and gets Derby down. There's five members of Quack coming in on the bottom. They're going to start to defuse. We're going to see uh, Red Commissar on the bottom side trying to make his way up. He d manages to get one frag, but then he's pushed off of it. They're one piece more. Oh, and he's just pinned. He's not having yeah, a good there's, time there. There's so many bullets, so many. Oh, but there, three of them are so low. Mandark there with that first kill over to Cad Monkey set things into motion, and Mace decided, "Hey, I'm just gonna back up into this corner." And uh, little did he know that it was th that was gonna cost him his life. Yeah, that wall charge just goes off. Monkey, I think if Cad Monkey stayed alive for a little longer, he would have saw the wall charge, and then Mace would have been able to back off. But you know, Cad Monkey tried to get a peek, just got laser beamed. You know, I think two, three black tars just shot at him. And so he just died so quickly. And, you know, Guac I mean, Red Team had the advantage starting this game with the, their eco win, but they've lost now three rounds in a row. So they're now, like, back on their toes, and they need to step up to win this game. You know, definitely going to probably see some of those power weapons coming out this time. It's a little bit make or break it. You know, you're looking at it. Three to one doesn't seem like that bad of a score line, but if you drop this round, it's four match points that they will have to face, and that's not a position that you ever want to be in. That's just rough as it goes uh, for any team, even the best uh, teams in, the, in this league. We'll see. Uh, do not like being in that four-one situation. They would rather have it be the uh, the other way around, four-one in their favor. Yeah, I mean, I've seen you know the reverse sweep. It's happened, and you know. It's going to be, if Guacamole wins this, then it's going to, Red Team basically needs to reverse sweep with four wins in a row. But, you know, I, you really don't want this to become match point. Match point would be very bad so early into this game. I mean, you basically have to play flawless after that. So, you know, Red Team is going to definitely try to step up most definitely and, you know, get, bring a lots of utility. Make sure they don't lose. There's only two rounds left on the fence, so... They're going to have a, quite a bit of utility left, though. Yeah, definitely. Like, like, Attack wants to go through this um this uh, red door in the middle of club room, which gives them it, which is quite exposed. But if you throw in smokes, you can actually get a lot of presence into this dance floor area. And with m multiple people with black tars, it actually is pretty devastating from what I've seen when people have played this map. But, you know, Satrams is ready, and he could get a kill if they door charge through this. So we're seeing that as the only deployed super weapon. There's going to be... Oh, wait. Did they use the auto shotty last round? can't remember. 
Uh, I do not believe so. It so they're, they're, they're saving for the win then, if that's so. But we're going to see that three-man push. Ninja Dude, though, with a saber. We'll see if he can counter that, that mop there. Smoke goes out. Fire onto the doorway to stop them. And it's going to be Satriums versus Ninja Dudes. And uh, not much happening just yet. There goes the fight breaking off. Satriams, he's got to keep his head down. That, that saber can take it off in an instant if he can't counter that with a single clean shot. And that'll be the shot there going out. Does not connect. He needs to hit these shots here with that mop. Got to get some damage before any of the attackers make their way in. Seeing Vash coming in on that bottom side, though. If he comes through now, he can get Satrams. Sides against it, though. Mason Satrams on the top side. Finally, a Mace kill comes out. It's going to be Derby, though. Mace throws the Molotov. It keeps the attackers outside even longer. And the, the, the attackers, two of them rotate now. Curb and Ninja Dude are now rotating back to lobby. And but there's a barbed wire there, so this push is going to be very slowed. Let's see if they decide to make a push. gets the mob kill. Very good kill on the Mandark. So still five members left alive of Team Red, and they haven't taken too much damage. This is a good round for them. Cad Monkey gets an important kill there. Gets a second kill. It's Satriam. Satriam comes in big on that round. Yeah, Satriam. up a 3k. You know, he just rushes in. Both the attackers are like... 20 health and he one one gets both of them and he gets that impressive start snipe what's a man dark this is really good for the fans this is what they need to turn this game around they they save their um equipment they've they have their power weapons and now they can if they win this they will tie it up this is a, this is you know again one of those make or break rounds. We'll see if Gua can take advantage. They're maybe a little bit too lax there on their uh, attempts to push in there. Gave up way too much early chip damage and then pushed in kind of one at a time a little bit and you know gave up some kills that they definitely shouldn't have. But you know that's all said and done. It's in the past. We go to Sea Store now, back to Starlight Kingdom, and we'll see if uh, if they can. Get the get that round advantage, get themselves on game point. Yeah, but you know, um Guacamole has just one door charge left. They can't they they cannot go through the storefront and you know they basically have to go through um these they basically have to go through arcade or shed usually and they and if you just put a like a barbed wire and freezer, a barbed wire bathroom, and like if you have one more and you just have a, lots of people watch this West um this arcade storefront door you're you're pretty much set i mean they can't the, the attackers can't go through any of these walls so unless they i mean you could do an interesting door charge on the storefront to deny that but you know then you have to go through storage which will take you even longer so it's really an interesting way to see which how teams will take it if they're gonna you know wh where they decide to place their uh, door charge for guacamole but you know the red team has the auto shotgun and mop so this is going to be very devastating both those two power weapons very much so so where do you think where, where would you put that uh auto shoddy bathroom possibly or arcade i would say would be the two best options uh i would probably not put an arcade you probably get a uh, pop flashed and you know it's pretty hard to run away i would just you know stick it in freezer um I'll probably, yeah, stick in freezer. That would probably be my... It looks like you're giving up that whole left side of the map, so uh, they're just going to play this a very tight defense here. Cat yep. Monkey with with the auto shot. We're going to see him in freezer, in freezer, like I predicted. And then Satrams is just going to watch that top side shed door, but he's also going to have that big line of sight. Yeah. Um, I think he the, can see all the way the into attackers, Arcade with that mop. The attackers are going to um, go through Arcade, and there, it is barbed wire for the storefront, and then they have two shotguns in three. So it's going to be hard to push to that freezer door, so the defenders are definitely ready for this. There goes the push. Ninja Dude opens that door, takes a big blast. He's down to 1 HP, but Mandar comes in and gets a kill over on the Can Monkey. The auto shot, he's down. Derby, Derby. insane double kill with the shotgun. Hit and picks up the auto. Oh, Derby goes down, though, pays for his crimes. Light goes off. It's just two members left alive, though, right now for Team Quack. They're facing down two other members, though, of, of uh, Red, and it's Mace and Satrams. One is very low, though. Uh, so we'll see if uh, Mace can do something with the Gruber here. We haven't seen him on that weapon for a while, and uh, he's used it to good effect when he had it. So there's a minute left before they even have to start touching the bombs, but Curb peeks the window, and he's taken down. Commissar gets that frag, and it's going to be all yeah, down the patch. That's a shotgun, and, you know, uh, Mace is so low that... Uh... Mace could die to a shotgun from very far away, and the Red Commissar could just get one, one, one pump. So it's definitely 
definitely winnable for Bash here. Yeah, just Bash way through that barbed wire. Oh, well, there goes a little bit of a peek from Mace as he's trying to spam that door. 40 seconds left. Commissar and Mace both just kind of grouping together, playing it smart. There goes a the smoke. Let's see what happens here. In the middle of the smoke, though, Bash finds the first kill. All down onto Red Commissar. Let's see what he does here. Playing onto the smoke, but he, he's going to get that final yeah, shot. Um, Tie right it up. Or... Is was played very good there. He was patient. If he rushed into that smoke, he would have got one pump. It was very good idea to just wait it out. And you know, and you know, Vash just pushed outside of the smoke, and he probably expected Red Commissar to be close, be in that one tap range. But you know, Red Commissar decided to just stay put, not move, be patient. You know, he he can swing wide and stop the the fuse with spam. So he did not have to risk fighting that shotgun. So switching sides back again, we're going to see red on the attack for these final three rounds. And and it's... This game is super duper close, and uh, like your prediction, you wanted a 5-4. This game is already going to be at least a 5-3, so it, it's going to be very close, very close. Especially for set number three, that's exactly what we want, a nice close tight match. So lessons learned the last time here on Fox Rush. Don't sit in that corner. Don't sit in that storage corner. Uh, where the wall breach will come through, uh, as yeah, we saw Mace but... get taken out last time. Just don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. I mean, I, I know one little secret, though. The attackers are going to go south. I don't believe you. Anyways. <laughs> Let's see how uh, Team Walk here sets up on the defense. The As we get near the culmination of the, uh, I guess what you would call the red versus green battle here. Uh, a little bit different take on red versus blue, um, but so far, Guac is impressed far more than uh, uh, I was expecting, and I'm I'm glad for that. They've really well, shown what they can do. This is red versus yellow. For some reason, their uh, their Discord team calls yellow. I mean, Guacamole is not yellow, but you know, I've been lied to. Um... <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why they're yellow. I think Ninja D just likes yellow. I think that's literally the reason why they're yellow. I don't know. Well, he needs to pick better colors because if I if I ever open up a yellow uh, avocado in my life, I'm gonna be disgusted and worried. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just a that's just a misshapen banana, in my opinion. It's just you know green banana, okay? The only problem I have with uh, with uh, avocados though is every time I open one up, the little prize inside is just a wooden ball, and I'm getting tired of that same prize every time. Oh. So here... nah, You're not yeah. buying the right avocados funny joke <laughs> so here we go <laughs> round number seven here uh winner of this round is going to be on match point so let's see if you can do that oh big shot rings out there in an attempt to shoot through that doorway but here we go it's going to be uh team red coming in from the bottom side into storage they're going to have pretty free entry here but curb with an angmar he's going to be able to take some spam shots over there connects a little bit though he gets some damage on the mace that could be big later on He's, he's getting pinned into this corner. He's going to try and have to make his way out before he gets fully pinned in place. He's not going to be able to do it. Does manage to get the first kill goal over on a red commissar. Uh, not seeing Bash coming into his aid, and they're just going to give that up. Bash yeah, is going to fall get, all the way back behind the top. They get the That's power, but, and they only have one flare. So this is they do not have much power. And Mace can grab this flare. Mace grabs the flare, throws it outside. They have no light. Oh, Derby over on the, I'm sorry, that was Satriams over on the Vash. Vash just taken out in an instant. Derby's now on the flank with the Saber, but we're going to see this three-man push coming into storage dock, and now looks like they're going to try and maybe split one man off into office. There is that barbed wire up there, though, so that's something to contend with. Three members of the defending side sitting here in office. There's the first kill, though. Ninja Dude taking out Satriams, and that's going to shift AJ over. He's going to make the rotate. He's going to start watching Generator, where two members are coming in. But one of them is Derby with with that uh, saber. That can be a big factor here coming in later on. They don't have visual on this bomb. They're going to have to be able to jump out of this window in a moment. And Mace is possibly waiting for that. If Mace uh, lets them jump out of that window, he's going to have free kills there. But no, it's going to be AJ getting them in the end now. But now the bomb defuse is still being tickled. Uh, Mandar tries to do something about it, but he gets taken down. It's going to be Ninja Dude on the backside. Derby now with a... <laughs> But the Saber can't get that final kill as Ninja Dude picks up his third kill of the round, comes in, saves the day, and now it is Guac on match point. Yeah, um, Red Team, they, they did that beginning execute so perfectly. I mean, they had, they had it was 4-3, they had the power, the they had the defenders had no power, but, you know, Satrams decide, and the, but the, I mean, 
the red team split up way too much. I mean, Satchum's in the office. Derby's all the way on the east side. I mean, Mace is watching something. Cat is going to the bomb if he's like, they were all split up and they just got picked one by one. So, so you like, maybe here's my question. You are maybe considered the underdog and now you're on, on match point. You've collected a saber and you haven't used up any of your super weapons. You just go for broke here. Do you pull out the mop and the auto shotty on this nice big wide open map? I think I that's going to be the case. I mean, Guacamole proved auto shotgun uh, mob on this map, and they could do auto shotgun mob saber all the, the, both snipers and the auto shotgun. They could pull out the triple power weapon. I mean, I would not be surprised if they do it. They've already proven it worked, and you know they're at match point and. Um, there's still wall charges available to red, so they have that factor to them, but they have used up one of their clackers, I believe. So this is going to be a problem for them. They're going to have very limited options. I don't believe they used the clacker. They, they went green. Did they go green? No, they did go green. Uh, I thought for a moment there they maybe had set up for a wall charge, but yeah, you're right. So they have both clackers, and I think, uh, I mean, you got to go for broke. Um, yeah, uh, if you're a red team here, you, you need to use your charges. Like, I would... I mean, um, the last map is going to be a sea store. So you probably want the wall charge door charge here. So I would definitely use at least one door charge and try to get you know a good execute done. I think you really want. I think they're trying to copy um, Guacamole's play. Go through this door, but throw smokes in. If you throw smokes in, you can actually get like a five man squad onto this dance floor, which would be very strong. Very much so, but we're seeing a very, very tight uh, grouping there. So they're going to throw a flashbang out to just get it, just get it used up so that it can't be uh, collected. I don't know why somebody grabbed that to begin with. Uh, um, I, don't know. I think a little friendly team BM. So it's going to be Ninja Dude on the mop. It's going to be AJ on the saber. Uh, Mandark with the Gruber and Curb with the Ingmar. And we're not seeing that auto shotty coming up, so they're saving it just in case. I guess that is a really yeah, good they, call there. I mean, the auto shotgun's, you know, king of sea store, so. You know, Satchum's going to blow up this door. Um, there's nobody in dance floor, and if they throw enough smokes in, they can actually be able to clock these two snipers. Mace throws a wall smoke into office, and now they can't sneak into office. Oh, big kill to Curb. Gets the first kill. AJ gets the second kill. Three members left alive. Curb goes down. Now it's just two members left. <laughs> One return, though. A frag from Red Commissar over on the Curb, but they're two men down here on the final round, what could potentially be anyway. As they make their way in the backstage, it's going to be... Bash up on the top side. He's going to pick this fight with Mace. Can he do it? A lot of chip damage in the backside. Commissar is now picking the fight with him. Coming up close range. Can Commissar do it? No, he can't. It's all down on the Mace. So one verse four. One verse three now. He gets that first mag, but he's going to try and make his way back. AJ gets a little bit of uh, damage off onto him with the pistol. And Mace, he's got his work cut out for him. I don't know if he can save it here. Ninja Dude and AJ pinning him into the corner, and it's going to be Ninja Walk. Dude. Just Walk wins 2 1 against Red Team. Absolutely incredible. A little celebratory uh, team fragging there. We'll see if uh, AJ can get that final kill, and he does over on his buddy Vash. As now he's going to kill himself. He, <laughs> he does. Uh, and infinite ring. Inf I don't know what infinite ringing. Unpossible, Inf as some would say. But uh, congratulations to Team yeah, Block for an exciting, it. exciting matchup. Just to recap. Uh, Team Glock uh, wins it in three, uh, a two to one victory. They won uh, five to three, then lost five to two, and then picked it up the, again for five to three. Um, yeah, now Guacamole is three one. I believe that is like they are very set for this. Um, they are very ahead in the brackets. I think they're they're in second place, only behind Fluff. Um, and now they are looking very good. Um. Guacamole, you know, they beat, I mean, a red team was, I would consider probably like the, the, the second best team, but they beat flatline. They, 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 the only team they lost to was fluff who was undefeated, but you know, red team was pr arguably probably one of the top, the top two second place, third place team. And now Guacamole just beat them. So, you know, huge upset story, I believe in. And, and as we've seen, uh, a little bit, I wouldn't say inexperienced in a bad way, um, one of the lesser seen teams uh, in matches and whatnot. And as they uh, progress, I think they are they have a very good chance at being a uh, a very highly skilled competitive team here. And that's not to say anything against Red. Red, they were bringing it there, and 
they've just got a few little areas if once they get rounded off on their uh, on their gameplay they're they're going to be very formidable they've got some all-star players on that squad and uh, if everybody else fills in their roles nicely um red's definitely a team to keep your eye out as well but that was exciting to say the least yeah, that was an incredible match, super close, and, you know, I really, you know, just incredible. You know, Red almost pulled back that comeback, but, you know, just Guacamole just closed it and sealed the deal with, you know, their incredible, I would say, Mop and Saber gameplay. I mean, they've been really been using those weapons. And, th and this is where we've started to see a little bit more of that nuance of the game come out in these matches where that um, tic-tac-toe sort of idea of, well, do I give up the first round as far as bringing in utility goes? And, you know, it's it's a matter of, you know, calling the bluff sometimes. Because um, if a team decides they want to go in heavy on the first round and they pay for it, you know, now you haven't just lost one round, you potentially lost three because of a misplay. And we're seeing that cautious strategizing uh, definitely coming through from these two teams time and time again. And it it worked well, you know, for all of them. Eventually, at, at some point, that paid off where you had uh, weapons available later in the game that you didn't, you know, have to use early on. So I believe we're going to get an uh, interview with one member of Glock Guacamole, uh, Na, Na Mantic, is here with us now. Hello, Na, Ma Na Mantic. Hey, how are y'all doing today? Excellent, excellent. Congratulations on that win. Thank you, thank you. It, it was getting a little, a little close there at the end, but don't worry. I got locker down pat. Ain't nobody getting through lockers. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. So uh, let's let's go over uh, a bit of your victory there. So you, you took that first set uh, pretty handily, and then dropped the second one. Coming into uh, set three, what was the mindset of the team? Were you all pretty confident? You know, having just lost uh, a set, did you? You still felt like you know you had this in the bag, kind of, or you know playing it safe and being careful. Uh, I think honestly, we knew that if we hit the game plan right, we had we had it in the bag, and so like it was really a big deal. Was how how are we gonna let them get to us? Because you know like when they're like uh, I think it was second map, the wall charge took out curb, it was super quick into the match, and that kind of threw things into like a spiral where things were really confusing. So I think once we just got our tempo going and we had our positions set up and we had a really good execute uh using the wall charge on factory so i think once we just ran that we we had it in our hands i i feel like you know were you uh at all worried when they brought it back three three though uh you know just you know you get a little worried but you know when you when you're in the moment you know like you just you just focus on the next round next round don't worry about what happens. You know, we had a, a setback on the last map where we felt like we could have taken it back, but we, we lost a clacker. So we had double door charges, but no clackers. So I think it really just comes down to our mindset, and we were golden. We were golden. Yeah, you guys definitely played very amazingly. And, um, you know, do you have any uh, favorite moments uh, from the match? Anything that you did, a teammate did, maybe something like – that was really cool that you saw the opponent did. You have any? Um, let me think. Uh, I think, uh, I think it was the first map. I had like uh the clutch moment with like the fuck. Uh, oh, language. <laughs> uh, with the super shorty. Uh, oh yeah, yeah killing the. the yeah, I was going that. on that one. I think that was at least my highlight. Uh, I think there was a couple other big plays. I think Ninja was definitely fragging out this game. He did a great job with uh, the mop on the last last round as well. Got the bag for us. But I think uh, I think I'm a big fan of my the super shorty and the legros. Yeah, we've definitely seen some weapon specializations for uh, different players for different maps. Um, so so you do you are a fan of the super shoddy. Is that always yours when it comes up, or uh, will you uh, divert that to other players sometimes? Um, super shorty. No one really takes that, so I I pick no, it up whenever no, I'm going. Not the auto Biako, the the Tanya Sada. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Either way, yeah, no one no one's really a big fan of it. Honestly, I feel like when you're close range, I trust the super shorty more than the the defender shotgun half the time. So I think it it's just a good gun. Honestly, I I don't know about anyone else, yep. but. I, I like it too. It's definitely my favorite secondary. I mean, I think the LS is slightly better, but you know. 
I yeah, think but the guy I already is have a leg gross. You know, like, I don't need. Uh, I like. I, I need some for kill box. So I mean, it works out. It works out. So. Anyways, yet again, congratulations on that victory, Thank and you, I hope to see you next week for uh, another exciting matchup, whoever that may be against. Oh, without a doubt, we're gonna. Y'all have seen us in the grand finals, all right? Without a doubt. Oh, that's this, a big. This is call. in our first form, all right? Super Saiyan God edition finals will be there okay what what stage of guacamole is that is that like this is like super guacamole stage like this is you ain't seen nothing yet this was you know we hadn't even practiced at all y'all haven't even seen the strats we have in the back you know so this 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 is the avocado and salsa and onion in the bowl you haven't even started mashing it together to get that you know perfect mixture you know this is just the star to something amazing so be ready be ready Yep. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Nomadic, for Nomantic for joining us. And um, uh, now, Bianca, do you have any uh, closing remarks for the stream? Uh, no, I think that'll about do it here. Uh, exciting matchup here. Remember to stay tuned for the rest of this weekend. We got matches on Saturday, Sunday, and even one more on Monday. Uh, some great gameplay going to be coming your way on Due Process League. So stay tuned. Keep your ears open. We'll give you announcements for when matches are going live. Yeah, and uh, I like to thank you know Stellark. I mean, not Stellark. I like to thank uh, my co- co-caster uh, Biako and and uh, you know um, Simber who stayed up to, to you know do production. So thank I like we really uh, appreciate it, Simber. And a little heartfelt message to Ozzy for getting us that that first set of um, <laughs> the first set in on his server. I think. Uh, didn't work out later on, but uh, you know that's how the the ball rolls sometimes, how the cookie crumbles and all that. But anyways, it's been fun, and uh, we look forward to seeing everybody again for the next set of matches later this weekend and into the future. <laughs>